Welcome to the Oshkosh Common Council meeting, May 14th. Clerk, would you please call the roll? Herman? Here. Crosey? Here. Ubergauer? Here. Peschel? Here. Allison Osby? Here. Paul Mary? Here. Present six. Uh, next, Deputy Mayor Herman has some comments. <coughs> Could we all rise for the invocation, please? Just want to uh, take a moment of silence to remember one of our fellow council members who recently passed, and it's kind of ironic that uh, we're honoring Harold Buchholz tonight, who was actually appointed to the council, uh, serving on the council, and some of those in the audience remember Harold for uh, his many years serving the city of Oshkosh as an appointed city council member, 2009-2010. He was appointed to the Landmarks Commission, serving for many years to the present with several terms as chairman. He's a charter member and the first chairman of the Long Range <laughs> Finance Committee, later serving as vice chairman of the Parking Utility and Board of Health. He lived in the Algoma Building Historic District, participating in progressive neighborhood dinners and conducting walking tours explaining the wonders and details of the architectural style. As a member of the Landmarks Commission, he researched and wrote narratives for the Acantus Awards and participated in exhibits for Gallery Walk. His photographs were used in the brochures for the Oshkosh Historic in downtown and in a book about Frank Lloyd Wright for children. So if we could just have a moment of silence to remember uh, Harold Bucoats who served this city in many, many capacities. Thank you. We ask your guidance tonight as we begin this meeting. May all those who participate in our discussions and our decisions reflect the values that we cherish in this great city. Pledge Shirley Maddox. <coughs> Whereas National Historic Preservation Month has been observed every May since 1973, and whereas historic preservation is relevant for communities across the nation, urban, rural, and everywhere in between, and for Americans of all ages, all walks of life, and all ethnic backgrounds, and Whereas historic preservation is an effective tool for revitalizing our older neighborhoods, enhancing property values, encouraging heritage and cultural tourism, fostering local pride and maintaining community character, and enabling economic development. And whereas historic preservation <laughs> and sustainability are natural partners to the reuse of historic buildings, which reduces resource and material consumption puts less waste in the landfills and consumes less energy than demolishing buildings and constructing new ones. And whereas Oshkosh has eight nationally recognized historic districts, one historic site, Riverside Cemetery, and many individually listed historic places. Now therefore, I, Lori Palmieri, Mayor of the City of Oshkosh, do proclaim May 9, 2019 as Historic Preservation Month and call upon the people of Oshkosh to join citizens across the United States in recognizing and participating in this special observance. Thank you for accepting. 
I'll just make a short comment because it's a historic night. Um, Harold Buckholz would be watching tonight, um, is watching tonight, and um, he was, was so proud of his friend Lloyd Wright home, but all the homes in Oshkosh that were built 75, 100 years ago, <coughs> with materials made in our city, built by the people that worked in our factories, Buckstaff, Morgan, Payne, um, and so during this month, if all of us would enjoy and appreciate those buildings, and if we live in one of those old houses or have an old building for a business, to maintain it, preserve it for another 100 years. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. <laughs> Mary Lloyd, Lord Janice, would you come forward to receive the proclamation on Mental Health Awareness Month? <clears throat> Whereas mental health is an important part for our individual well-being and vitality, as well as that of our families, communities, and businesses, and whereas one in five Americans experience a mental health illness that requires treatment at some point in their lives, and one in 10 children has a serious emotional disturbance, if untreated can lead to school failure, physical illness, substance use, jail, and even suicide, and whereas stigma and stereotypes associated with mental illnesses often keep people from seeking treatment that could improve their quality of life. And whereas mental illness is a biologically based brain disorder that cannot be overcome through willpower and is not related to a defect in a person's character or intelligence. And whereas mental health recovery is a journey of healing and transformation that benefits individuals with mental health disorders by focusing on their abilities to live, work, learn, and fully participate and contribute to our society and also enriches the culture of our community life. <coughs> and whereas the city of Oshkosh and its citizens are committed to inspiring hope, empowering people, and strengthening communities, now therefore, I, Lori Palmieri, mayor of the city of Oshkosh, do hereby proclaim May 2019 as Mental Health Awareness Month in the city of Oshkosh and urge all citizens, government agencies, public and private institutions to recommit our city to increasing awareness and understanding of mental illness and the need for appropriate and accessible services for all people with mental illnesses to promote recovery. Thank you. NAMI, the National Alliance on Mental Illness, has been proud to be in Oshkosh since 1979, and I urge everyone to talk about mental health. Thank you. <laughs> so we may need to have a change in the agenda this evening. Um, we do have someone here to speak on consent agenda. If council wishes to um, move the consent to agenda forward ahead of the presentations. I'll need a motion and a second on that. So moved. Second. I didn't mean that. <laughs> I have to take a vote on it. Clerk, can we please call the roll? Herman? Aye. Krause? Aye. Mugerower? Aye. Peschel? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried six. And do we have someone registered to speak then? We do for item number 14, which is resolution 19278. Yes. Mark Wessel, 4825 East Kearney Avenue, Springfield. If you would come up to the podium. Hello. So this is resolution 19278, approved specific implementation plan amendment <coughs> to allow a second electronic message center at 2770 West Town Avenue, 
Plan Commission recommends approval. Okay. If you have any questions, I just wanted to make sure that I was here to answer any questions. Uh, there's a lot of narrative and dialogue on it through the Planning Commission, so I feel like most of the points have been spoken to. But I just wanted to make sure that if there were any direct questions, I'd be here to answer those. Council members, any discussion, questions? No, no questions. Huh? No. Well, thank no. you. No. All right, thank you. So a motion and a second to pass the consent agenda. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, just a question um, on number five, the village of West Haven. Is that a misprint or? <laughs> We didn't, I didn't know West Haven was a village because if they are, they don't belong in the city then. <laughs> Is that just a misprint on the agenda? I it just uh, talks about receiving filing a claim with the city insurance county village of West Haven yeah. for alleged damage to your sign from a city vehicle. I believe that's the name of the subdivision. Uh, West Haven, yeah, it's got a sign on it. it says, yeah. yeah, it's uh, not the. The village, village or city or town. Uh, Clarification yeah. to make sure that. I did the it double reflects. click myself. Okay. Scrabby? That's actually the name of the condo association. Is oh, is the village? The village of West okay. Haven. That is the name of the condo association. Is that the condos off in the ninth and West Haven area? Or? Uh, I yeah. believe oh, yes. Cool. That yes, okay. ninth and West Haven or uh, ninth and Oakwood. Okay, very good. Thank you for the clarification. Any other items from consent agenda? Clerk, can we please take the roll? Herman? Aye. Crozy? Aye. Bugarower? Aye. Pesha? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried six. All right. <coughs> so next we have presentation by council candidates. And I want to thank all the applicants for showing up and coming to give us your presentations. I will uh, be calling each of you in the order on the agenda. And following your five minute presentation, council members may have questions. So first we have Kia Thal. Hi everyone. And thank you for pronouncing my name correctly. Usually, I am, people will call me Kai, and I say, no, it's Kia, the car. So thank you um, <laughs> for having me here. As um, Mayor Lori Palmieri said, my name is Kia Tao. I, um, my family and I have been in Oshkosh and have called Oshkosh home for the last 30 years. And as a community member, business owner, and educator, I am passionate about ensuring a welcoming and inclusive um, living and learning environment for all who is here in the city. As you know, every, even today, people with different backgrounds than what society would consider normal um, still face disheartening and discriminatory uh, backgrounds, such as verbal urban racism. And we have heard of this in the recent um, incidents at UW Oshkosh. So how can you as city leaders work together with the educational system so that we are able to make sustainable changes that not only prepare our next generation of student leaders but also for our communities. We need to build more awareness and education so that people can be more informed and involved to learn about each other, understand each other, and build stronger communities. Diversity will not only uh, will not go away, and they will not only um, continue to grow in Ashkash, but everywhere you go, you will in, encounter diversity in every aspect of business, in every, every wake of life. So to embrace these differences in each other, that starts from the community leaders. Our children then will reflect our actions. As a child refugee who came to the United States to, to see a better life, one that is safe and secure, I want to be able to ensure that the same security happens for all of our children and everyone who comes here 
to Ashkash to call Ashkash their home because everyone deserves it and we must work together to make that happen. So the city's economic growth is only going to increase. Therefore, how do we welcome people who come from different backgrounds and perspectives? Sustaining a business isn't easy, and it's even harder when you don't feel welcome. As a business owner, I want to see more small business that reflects the diversity in Oshkosh, whether it be restaurants, shops, or other opportunity to diversify the many cultures in Oshkosh. Yes, we do now have a handful of this kind of business, <laughs> but we can look to do more in helping this existing business and to even help the startup ones. By working together to find resources to support sustained businesses that reflects the culture of the citizens living here, I feel will attract more visitors, especially from nearby communities to the city. As a resident, I am invested in my community for the long term because I believe that Ashkash has so much potential to do more and to serve more. I have seen a growth of diversity in the city for almost three decades that I am here. And I want to help build Ashkash to be a community that welcomes other, others because that is who we are. We support each other, we embrace each other, and celebrate each other's differences. Our differences actually make us stronger because we are stronger moving forward to make this city a welcoming and inclusive place for everyone. When citizens feel safe, secure, and happy where they call home, they will work with the community to make their city flourish. They will get involved in the community, and when they are involved, they will care for their community. We have a great community with a newer city right in our backyard, great corporations and companies that bring employment and business to the community, and the quality of life in Oshkosh is wonderful. I will acknowledge that we have some great events as well, you know, such as New Unity and Community, but we can do more. And so let's continue to work on many of these things so that it's better for everyone who lives there and who comes here to call Ashkash their home. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Tao. So next we'll um, go with questions and if council uh, could limit your questions to one, uh, until each of the other council members have had an opportunity and then <coughs> submit any further questions to the applicants. So if that makes sense, if you could save any follow-up questions okay. until each, the council members could save uh, follow-up questions until each. So go ahead and stay okay. there. Stay I'll here. Stay here, okay. Yes. <laughs> Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you. Um, what do you feel is the most important role as a council member? I think the most important role as a council member is to be a voice for the community, to see what the community wants and to be the voice to um, make sure, ensure that the community um, is happy in the sense. Because like I say, if we have a happy community, I'm pretty <coughs> sure just like a happy family, everything just kind of flourished. And so as a council member, I want to be a voice and to represent what my community is looking for and it's asking for. Thank you. Councilmember Mugerauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, thank you for coming. And, and actually, right off the bat, thank you, everyone, for the interest uh, in the open position. <coughs> um, if you could pick just one, what's the most important issue that faces the city of Oshkosh right now? Right now, I think one of the, well, there's a lot of <laughs> important issues. But I think one of the ones uh, that is the south side coming into um, the uh, downtown into Ashkash going to Menominee Park. I do business on that side and although we have a lot of traffic going back and forth, there's not a lot of um, customers in a sense because there's not a lot that's drawing people to that side of the town at the moment. So I think if we could get some business over there, we could get some kind of recreational activities to draw people coming back to that area. Because right now, if you can, you know, anything that comes up, it's on the west side. And I would like to revitalize that area to be more um, alive again, in a sense. And I don't want that area to be referred as the ghetto area, in, in a sense, because I do business there. And it's not because I do business there, but it's also because part of the community that we 
be careful. We don't want to divide the community in a sense of, oh, this is a better place, and that's where I want to go. And it's it's everywhere in Ashkosh, it's a better place. <clears throat> Other questions? Thank you. Thank you. Linda Javaltas. Good evening to the Oshkosh Common Council and Madam Mayor. Thank you for the opportunity to speak to you about my desire to be of service to the people of Oshkosh by becoming a member of the City Council. <coughs> First, I want to share that I originally am from Milwaukee and moved into Oshkosh in 1980 with my three young daughters. Oshkosh had become my partner in bringing up my children. There was a good quality of life here. In 1983, I graduated from UW Oshkosh with a bachelor's degree in social work and immediately found a job. Years later, when my children were grown, I moved to Nashville, where in 1999, I received my Master of Science degree in social work with an emphasis in public administration. I spent my third year of graduate studies monitoring the Tennessee State Legislature. One of the most powerful things I learned was that people's stories mattered. In 2000, it was back to Oshkosh. My oldest daughter had two children that I wanted to be near. Now let me talk a couple minutes about social work practice, because not everybody is aware of what social workers do and why they do it. Social work is grounded in systems theory. The basis of systems theory is understanding that no one lives in isolation. From the moment we are born, we are influenced and impacted by systems, or the lack thereof, family systems, school systems, religious institutions, financial institutions, government agencies, local, state, and federal laws that dictate and govern public policy, and healthcare organizations, to name a few. Just last month, two community health strategists from the Winnebago County Health Department came to speak to the Oshkosh Rental Housing Authority, Housing Advisory Board, of which I'm a member. They shared that upon assessment, they found that the main factor behind housing concerns as it relates to health is social connectiveness and the lack thereof. The bottom line is we need systems in our lives to maintain homeostasis. Toward the end of my career as a medical social worker, I taught social work studies at the UW Oshkosh Social Work Department. One of the courses I taught was public policy. Upon retiring from UWO, I decided to become active in my community. I'm not only on the Rental Housing Advisory Board for the city, but I'm also a member of the Millers Bay Neighborhood Streetscape Committee. My final words here will be regarding my neighborhood and the vision I hold in that regard. The Millers Bay neighborhood happens to be very engaged in wanting their neighborhood to become a desirable place to live and play, and the city has been supportive of the Millers Bay neighborhood efforts. It is smart for the city to do so, as the tax base generated by desirable housing benefits all. However, I believe there needs to be a systems theory approach to the next step in uplifting Millers Bay neighborhood and all the neighborhoods in the city. Our streetscape committee met with public leaders last summer to find out why some of our proposals could not be acted upon. We were re requesting bump outs on corners and perhaps a meridian on Menominee Drive to calm the neighborhood and create a village effect. We had talked about burying wires and flowers and grasses we had in mind, among other things. We were informed that the city budgets for improvements were planned five years out, of, out already, and that bump outs on certain corners would be problematic for snow plowing. Mr. Valtes, can you finish up? You're at your five minutes. I am. I'm not talking <laughs> fast enough then. <clears throat> so, let me finish up my fabulous end.
Can from a systems theory, from a systems theory approach, when Oshkosh decided to put forth effort to build strong neighborhoods, what was really required was a paradigm shift. Neighborhoods should not become strong in isolation. Neighborhoods could become partners with Parks Department, the Public Works Department, the Public Arts and Beautification Department. When a street needs paving, the neighborhood could be consulted about lighting and trees. A paradigm shift is huge and not easy to, to achieve. And I'll end there since I'm over my time. Thank you. Okay. Councilmember Member Mugerauer. Thank you. Um, Ms. Feltes, thank you for your interest. And sure. so one quick question. The topic of diversity, um, as it should, continues to come up, whether uh, at, at council during budget sessions, whether it's uh, at candidate forums in the spring for, for when candidates run, um, run for office as well. What do you view the city's responsibility is with diversity in the community? Uh, what actions could we take or where should the city be involved in that topic? With regard to diversity, well, first of all, I think that um, having a police department that's aware of diversity, such as a, a diverse, uh, diversity training might be helpful with the police department, that there's inclusion in our public school system. Um, and just in general, um, to have a public be aware that there is diversity. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, you mentioned um, paradigm shift. Mm -hmm. um, I asked the question of the first way that applied, and thank you again for applying also. What do you feel is the most important role as a <coughs> council member? Um, when I was talking a paradigm, of a paradigm shift, where I was leading to was that um, housing and neighborhoods need to be enhanced so that we can have um, a greater tax base. So we need money, the city needs money to do things. And my belief that um, is that we can get there by having a good tax base for our homes. Also, I think housing for the average young family is important. I don't think there's enough of it. I have family members right now that are looking for housing and can't find any for them and their children. I also think, um, because I'm on the Rental Housing Advisory Board, I um, do believe that the city could make more efforts, and we're doing that now with the board, in sort of cleaning up our neighborhoods so that they're appealing and, um, and, and holding um, landlords accountable for caring for their properties um, if they're not being cared for. So I think housing in general, housing, um, keeping up properties, um, and the neighborhoods. I think neighborhoods are vitally important. Thank you. Council Member Mugrauer. Did, did anybody, I just want to make sure everybody else has a chance before it comes back. Go ahead. Okay, just one quick one, it's probably a yes or no. Did you have a chance to review tonight's agenda? I did. Okay, just asking. Sure. Just making sure. Okay. Thank you. I just have a, a quick question, sure. uh, Linda. Is there are there any other boards or commissions or agencies that you serve on that might present any kind of conflict of interest? Should we, you be appointed uh, to council? No, ma'am. Okay, thank you. David Rucker. Thank you. Hi, good evening. good evening. I'm David Rucker. Thank you for allowing me to present uh, to you this evening, city government, Madam Mayor, city council members. What an exciting time to be part of Oshkosh. The city of Oshkosh has been my home for many, many years, homeowner for over 20 years. Came to college here back in the 80s, kind of stayed, have enjoyed it. <coughs> The growth that this city is going through with some of the different opportunities for business 
and the different organizations is, is very exciting for someone such as myself that is very passionate about the city of Oshkosh and the growth from an economic standpoint. From a resume standpoint, um, I serve on a number of boards for the city. I'd like to thank the council for appointing me to the library board earlier this year, which I've enjoyed. I also serve on the uh, Greater Oshkosh Healthy Neighborhoods Board as their chairman, and uh, uh, no, numerous other committees, boards, and different organizations that I serve and really enjoy. Went through a very, very interesting process over the last few years in regards to, you know, children grow up, go off to college, they graduate from college, and, and one of my biggest passions is to volunteer and to help individuals and you want to be part of the city and the organization. Moving the city forward and being part of the excitement that is Oshkosh itself. Um, and additionally, on a personal level, I um, work for a bank here in, in Oshkosh been a banker for a long period of time. I help families, I help people, I help small businesses, uh, whether it is from housing, whether it is from investments, whether it is from deposits and ensuring that individuals have uh, a good economic and financial future. And that's really passionate to me when I can help someone get into a home, provides uh, living for their family. So. Uh, in regards to that, um, some of the things that I'm most passionate about, and, and the other individuals have spoken to this already, is that downtown development is very important to me. I live a resident of downtown Oshkosh. Um, I, I view some of the local communities in regards to how they invite individuals and people into their downtown and uh, want to be able to make sure that our downtown is inviting prosperous and in uh, an area that's very uh, attractive to, to individuals. So in regards to that, you know, we, we speak about the neighborhoods. You know, I've been on the board of directors for the Greater Oshkosh Group for over three years, and it's very important that that it continues to be a strong point for this council, for the city. Uh, what that does is it really does help in regards to reducing the crime and allowing individuals to be proud about their homes. So but with that said, I really would enjoy the opportunity to be part of this council. I'm very passionate about the city of Oshkosh, moving it forward on an economic basis, and uh, would enjoy that opportunity. So I would entertain questions at this particular time. Councilmember Krause. <clears throat> um, thank you, Mr. Rucker, for thank applying. You. Um, my main question, and a lot of the questions I'm going to be asking to a lot of people is like, why now? Why not run in April or past elections? You have a great resume. It seems like you could add value to the city as you've already been on multiple boards and stuff like that. Thank you. So why this, why now? Yeah, I think it's really on a personal basis, really more than anything else. As I, as I mentioned, uh, you know, I'm kind of an empty nester now. Both of my children have and are getting ready to graduate uh, from college. And I, I really have found myself over the last couple of years finding that giving back to the community is very important to me. And uh, as I stated, I, I do like to volunteer, uh, different committees, different organizations that I spend a lot of time doing. Um, I've identified kind of a, a, a path <coughs> that I'd like to do going forward, and uh, this was uh, an opportunity for me to, to continue on that path. Thank you. Good, thank you. Other questions from council? Councilmember Uberauer. Madam Mayor, um, it's kind of a two-fold question, but it might be the same answer. Um, <clears throat> 2019 budget and our capital improvements budget, we spend a fair amount of time in, in the fall. Staff spends a lot of time in the fall uh, putting that together. We spend several days um, uh, listening and reviewing and, and giving our input. Have you had a chance to review our 2019 budget, our operating budget, and our capital improvement plan? Good. No, I have not. Thank you. Okay. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> I've asked this of every candidate. <coughs> as a council member, what do you feel is the most important role as a city council member? Yeah, it's to move the city forward, to, to take advantage of where the city is at, and to continue 
uh, that process, um, looking at some of the, the recent developments with the economic pieces in regards to some of the corporations, the neighborhoods, and, and continuing to su support those those pieces. Thank you. All right. Uh, I do have uh, a question as well. Ms. Drecker, thank you again for applying. Um, you mentioned serving as chair on the board for Go H&I. Yeah. Um, as an organization, um, I, I guess this question is kind of a, an ethics question. How do you feel uh, a council member should vote in general if they are uh, a board member on an organization that receives funds from the city? Yeah, I've thought about that, and as a uh, possibility of, of being a member of this council and, and what that would look like, uh, I, I think it's really important that a candidate and a, a member um, would divide those responsibilities. Um, I've served on the board for over three years and, and have, have really enjoyed it and enjoyed the support of the city for that and work with a lot of excellent individuals, uh, but would realize that uh, if, if this is an opportunity for me, th that I would uh, consider this a, a first priority. Thank you. Any others? All right, thank you. Thank oh, you. Sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, Councilmember Krause. So with those situations, you'd be recusing yourself if it was a financial conflict? If that was a concern, mm -hmm. that would be the uh, path that I would choose, yes. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you. David Keck. Thank you. I, I applied when I saw this opening. I applied because I've always had some uh, interest in working with the community. I've done a, uh, been a number of years volunteering. I've been in Oshkosh for over 25 years. I've seen the city grow, uh, and I've watched uh, carefully as uh, that growth has taken place. Oshkosh is my home. Uh, I feel uh, strongly about that. I can't say I always um, have seen all of the, the, the changes to Oshkosh that I thought were maybe positive, but for the most part, I, I, I do believe they are. I wanted to uh, take this opportunity to, to ask uh, for an opportunity to be to serve on the uh, on the council for a number of reasons uh, primarily I think the strengths that I bring to this position are really my from my background I am an attorney uh, and I've been an attorney here for over 25 years I uh, served as a court commissioner for about 10 years for Winnebago County across the street um, I've been a attorney here practicing I still practice I do pro bono cases uh, because I believe in giving back to the community. I think the strengths that I bring here from my background really are my ability to uh, listen carefully to all sides of a, of a debate or a discussion about uh, what is before what is before me and to uh, ask the, sometimes the difficult questions but also the easy questions when, they're, when it's appropriate. And I'm also uh, always able or almost always able to come to a, a decision that I, that I feel comfortable with. I know sometimes that requires Compromising sometimes it requires talking the, a, a problem through, but it's something that I've done for a number of years, and I feel that that's something I could bring to this this council, uh, and so I'm, I'm I'm really thankful for for that. Um, I, as stated, I uh, started a and co-founded a uh, legal assistance clinic here in Winnebago County a number of years ago. I, I served as the uh, supervising attorney for that for probably eight years. Um, I believe strongly in giving back to the, to the community here, and I really thank you for an opportunity to, to let me come here and, and, and present what, what I think what I can what I can offer you. Do council members have questions for Mr. Keck? Councilmember Mugger Hour. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, let's turn our attention, I guess, to, to our TIF policy. The city of Oshkosh has a policy where we use um, have the ability to use tax dollars to spur development, to reduce blight in our community, to improve economic conditions, um, you know, whether it's Oshkosh Corp, whether it's uh, Menominee Nation Arena, right. uh, Granary Area, those types of, you know, the South Shore Development Area. Do you have a view on, uh, on our TIF policy and the use of tax dollars 
to spur development uh, in some of those areas. No, I think it makes a lot of sense to do that. I think that at the same time, I think it's it's important with each of those, every time something is approved or is, is put before the council, I think it's important uh, sort of on a case-by-case -case basis to decide what is an appropriate use of those funds. I think uh, that the, the tax increment policy, I think, is a, is a good one. I think it makes a lot of sense for that reason. Uh, at the same time, uh, you know, Oshkosh over the years has become known as an as a event city and all of that, and I, and, and I appreciate that, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a good trend, it's a good thing for the city to be looking at, as well as uh, keeping the, the, the businesses here that, that have been here for years and keeping those thriving and, and making sure they have a good place to, 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 to do the work they do. At the same time, I think it's important for us all to take a look at the quality of life in the city of Oshkosh and re keep in mind that not all growth. I mean, I've seen sort of indiscriminate growth around the, around the country. Sometimes that's that's something that we have to keep in mind. Uh, what is the balance here we could make between between continuing to have a, a good economy here for for the quality of life of everybody else, but at the same time balancing that with what's the quality of, of life for for the, all of us who are living here. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor, uh, Mr. Keck, to be. Thanks again for applying. Be consistent with the other question I asked is, what do you feel is the primary role as a city council member to the city of Oshkosh? Thank you. I, the way I see that the primary role really is, as I said, to listen on a case-by-case -case basis to anything that comes before us and to really ask the important questions and have the discussion before there's a vote on it because once it's been voted on, that's really not the time to really be asking them. So I think it's important to give everyone an opportunity to be heard and I think it's important to ask the questions and, 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 and look for answers or at least try to find some you know what the purpose of any of any resolution is so I think that's that's the what I would see and then also important is to have the discussion you know in, in, in an open way and come to a decision on that. Okay. I have one more if nobody else does. Uh, Mr. Keck you've been an attorney in Woodville County for a long time and obviously court commissioner Quite a few times, council goes into closed session and advised by other legal counsels. You probably have a working relationship maybe with some of these attorneys over the years. Would you recuse yourself from that discussion because of a potential conflict of interest or anything, or how would you handle the well, situation? That's a, I mean, that's another, I mean, as a court commissioner, that, that's a kind of a common scenario, for example, when, a, when one, an attorney, for example, or someone from the courthouse is, is actually a litigant in the, in, in the hearing. I think the first thing for recu recusal always is the first step is really disclosure. And in other words, telling everyone there's a, there's a connection here that I have with this person. And then the next, the, sort of the next step in that analysis is, is that going to affect how I make my decision here today? And I think it's important that that discussion take place openly. If it's determined that there is a conflict there and it's something that I, that I shouldn't be listening to, I would certainly recuse myself. I don't have any, any reason to stay on if, I, if I've got a conflict. Thank you very much. Appreciate it. All right. Looks like we don't have any other questions. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. William Miller. Thank you very much. Uh, William Miller, 3322 Isaac Lane. Um, I think most of you know me, um, but for everybody else, uh, born and raised here in Ashkosh, um, raised uh, three wonderful daughters, uh, love the community. We have an amazing community. Um, <clears throat> 35 years in the telecom business, uh, 26 years running a small business here in town. Uh, numerous boards and committees from the Boys and Girls Club, YMCA, Advocap, uh, the Parks Board, which I'm still a part of, proud, proud of that as well. Um, the, the, the biggest thing I want to mm -hmm. communicate to the council is I'm not a one-issue council member. I don't, I don't have an agenda. I, I take a global approach to all issues. So um, I, I, I'm not up here pitching for any one entity or, or plan or process or program. So um, and with that, I'll keep it short and get to the questions. 
Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor. I'll ask the same question, Mr. Miller. What do you think is the primary role of a city council member? Compromise and teamwork. We're not all going to agree. I'm guessing 70% of the time you don't all agree. So, I mean, um, you, we got to figure out a way to work together, compromise, um, come to some solutions as a group. So, thank you. Councilmember Allison Osby. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Mr. Miller, what do you think is one or two of the most crucial issues in the city of Oshkosh or at what we're facing? Uh, there, there's, definitely, there, there's definitely a diversity uh, issue that, that needs to be addressed. I mean, that's, that, that's just globally at the university here at the city in our workplace. Uh, um, that, that's, that's definitely right up there at the top of the list. Um, and, the, and the next thing is, is financial. We've got to find ways to finance uh, equipment and, and things for, for our departments. Um, we've, we've got a real shortfall, real capital shortfall here, and we've got to find unique ways to handle that. And it's, I'm not saying we need to raise taxes or anything, but there's multiple ways we can deal with that. Thank you. Council Member Mugarar. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> this might be a kind of an odd question, but so over the last probably two weeks or so, I've received more calls in support of you to be the next council member than I've probably received on any issue in one year being on council. Seemed, yeah. a, seemed a little odd to me, but maybe uh, you might want to give me or give us a reason why you have that kind of support in the community. Handed out a lot of envelopes. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Uh, I, I, I really believe in this council. I really believe part of the process. Um, I, I, I truly want this. Um, uh, it, it's something I'm excited for. Other council questions? Councilmember Krause. Um, same question I had before. Why didn't you run in April? Why haven't you ran in the past? You seem like you'd be a good candidate. Well, thank you. Um, it, it's quite easy. We, we've got a we've got a damn good council. I mean, look look at everything that's going on here. Um, I, I didn't see a reason to run. Uh, you, you guys are doing a pretty good job. I just want to keep the ball moving down the field. Councilmember Rugerauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. One last follow-up. Um, so you mentioned finances. You mentioned you know, uh, financing equipment and other things like that. And one of the previous uh, applicants, I'd brought up our budget, our CIP. Anything in particular within our budget or our CIP that you either take exception with or that you might like to see enhancements or any I, thoughts on our? I, I'd like to get our debt upgraded. I, I think that's going to save us a little bit of money. I was kind of disappointed when our debt got downgraded, and I, I think there's some things we can do there. All right. I have uh, one question uh, that relates to uh, the diversity and um, that being one of your top priorities. So you mentioned that that would be a top priority uh, or that you consider that to be one of the top issues for the city. How do you see the city playing a role in that issue? We need to recruit people. And my, my business friends are going to kill me for saying this, but our unemployment rate, I think, last time I heard, is less than 2%. Um, we, we've, got a, we've got a minority population here of Oshkosh of less than 9 or 10%, somewhere in there, yet our schools have a a minority population of about 20 percent so I, I mean, we've got some real challenges there um, but I think we've got to figure out ways to recruit people to Oshkosh it, we don't we don't need more businesses it, it, we need more bodies and we need bodies staying here thank you all right doesn't look like we have any uh, further questions for Mr. Miller let's move on to Nathan thank you, thank you. Thank thank you, you. so much Nathan Stiefvater Hello, uh, thank you for having me. My name is Nate Stiefvater. Uh, I am a business owner in town. I've been here, I moved to Oshkosh back in 97 to open a business. And with, uh, with a whole lot of luck, 22 years later, I'm still here. Uh, my big reasons for, for, for you know, I ran for, uh, for an office back in, uh, back in February. Congratulations, thank Madam, you. Madam Mayor. You're so kind. For the butt whipping work. <laughs> um, the older I get in this town, you know, I spent the I spent the first about 15 years here, uh, you know, really really buckling down, putting my head to the ground, or like you know, my feet to the, to the floor, and, and paying off my business. Now that that's all taken care of, you know, there's obviously more things I need to do there. 
But the older I get, you know, I'm married now and I have a couple of kids and Oshkosh is my home. And the more I'm here, the more I always feel this need to do more and be more of a, a, a part of this community. Uh, I'm a firm believer that, uh, you know, you're, you really shouldn't complain or, 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 or see fault in what you are not willing to be a part of uh, the solutions for. Uh, and for myself, uh, that, that's always a big deal. Um, you know, I've always said before, you know, I'm not a candidate for change. I don't think the city uh, needs, needs a whole lot of actual uh, change. We are going in the right direction in so many fronts. Like I said, all the new construction all around town is evident. I mean, you can't go anywhere in this town without seeing, without seeing big new buildings and, and, and a lot of fun stuff coming, not just for our economic development with like Oshkosh Corps, but stuff for the community, like our river walk and our, and our, and our new arenas uh, and, and all that projects that are coming down there. If there's an area that I've always thought needed work, it is the communication to the actual citizens, the actual people in, this Osh in, in Oshkosh. Uh, uh, in the business that I'm in, I'm uniquely situated in the fact that I talk to a, a wide range. You know, my constituents, if you may, uh, range from the, from the professionals of this town to the working class. To the young, to the younger adults, you know, the under 30 crowd, who I feel, you know, get ignored a lot of the time. Maybe a lot of it's their fault; they don't look into it, and they're not maybe that active. Uh, but the conversations I have always tend to uh, always tend to circulate around the fact that um, there's perceived uh, misrepresentation, uh, or simply just a lack of knowledge of what's going on. You know, and again, I I'll concede the fact that a lot of that has to do with the, most people just don't research and go out and do the work. I mean, my, myself, you know, I've been, again, a business owner for 20 years. And I personally feel that, um, that the city government of Oshkosh, for the most part, really um, does, would, would care less if I close my doors tomorrow. And again, that's a perception. It's, uh, uh, it's how I feel, and I know that's vague, and it's very, it, it's not concrete, and it's hard to define. But it's still how I personally feel. Uh, and, there, and there's there's a bit of truth in perception. Uh, again, what I'm uniquely qualified for uh, is this is a city liaison you know, to the excuse me to our citizens. Um, my sorry, I lost my train of thought. Um, I don't have much more. Like I said, this is just my my appeal. Uh, you know, there's an open seat. You know, when you know when I look at it. You know, it's a tough job. Uh, you're in the public. You know, you're 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 going to be set up for 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 not only uh, accolades but a lot of criticism, if you and could for maybe close, criticism. If you could close up. Sure, you yeah. bet. Um, and I've been I've been asked to uh, to to fill this seat, uh, and I find it my 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 Ashconian duty to Thank uh, you. to try. Thank you so much. Um, questions, council members, for Mr. Stiefvater. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Stiefvater, um, what do you believe is the primary role of a city council member? We are the, again, the liaisons to the citizens. You know, we're not, you know, the council members. You're not hired. We're, we're elected. Uh, we're elected by the people. And the people want members that speak for them. Um, that's our job. Obviously, you know, the council has their nose in, uh, uh, in the decision-making process uh, for, for, for all the technical things and, and for everything that goes on in the city. But it doesn't matter if the city doesn't know what we're doing. Uh, again, we are, the, uh, we, are the, we are the voice of the people. Um, you know, Mark Rollo is, is hired to do a lot of this stuff. Council is elected uh, by the people, for the people. And that's, uh, that's, that, that's the most important part of the council, is to speak for the people uh, and, 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 and have the greater good always, always at the core of their, their, their job. Councilmember Member Hour. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, before we begin, uh, yeah, I'm sorry, I did not uh, read the budget or the agenda. <laughs> <laughs> you, didn't, you didn't read several hundred pages? No. I did not. Okay. 
Um, you re as, as you mentioned, you recently ran for mayor, uh, and thank you for doing so. Um, going through that process can be humbling, can be tough mentally and physically too. Did you learn anything through that process, either about your community, about yourself? Um, I did. I mean, I, I, I learned the process, and I learned there's a lot of people in the city that wanted to talk to me. Uh, one of my, uh, you know, again, it was a, a, it was a decision. I didn't know a lot about it. It was a very, uh, um, uh, it was very jumping, kind of cold kind of thing. Um, but what I learned is the people, you know, once my name was out there, and my phone's ringing off the hook. Um, you know, every, uh, every group in town wanted me to show up and say something at some event here and there. And I had to miss a lot of it. Um, but again, what that told me is exactly what I've been saying. It's that the people on this council, the city wants to know who we are. Uh, and and, and that's, that's always what I thought is just, is just lacking. Uh, I, when I was running for mayor, actually, I just looked it up when I, when I, when I came here. But until today, if you, if you Google the city of Oshkosh mayor, uh, it says Frank Tower. Uh, and I looked at today, and it says Steve Cummings. But again, it's also a, it's, it's a, it's a small microcosm thing of how, you know, the city doesn't know us. Thank you. Uh Councilmember Allison Asby. Thank you. You had mentioned uh, that you think one of the things that um, while we're moving in a good direction is working on communication between uh, City Hall or government and the citizens. What is your action, you know, what would be your action plan or your ideas of how to improve that? Um, as you probably understand, I'm a big small business guy. Oxymoron there. Uh, but the small businesses in our towns uh, in our city, you know, Oshkosh, the lifeblood of our of our streets, um, you know, not not just our, our service industry, but our boutiques and and you know, I think uh, you know the downtown just had a wine walk on Saturday, and and in the, the group of ladies that I know went, every single one of them was was amazed by how you know how many small little areas that they never seen before. Um, so when you're really talking about you know how to how to get through to you know, to the citizens, you know, it's a small business. I mean, the, the citizens of this, of the, of this, um, of the Voshkosh, they're not, they're not going to Walmart and sitting down with the cashier and telling them all their problems. They're telling it to their, you know, to their, you know, to the local establishments and their boutiques and their, uh, and their, in their different shops. You know, they, I've always, I've always thought the, the, the small business is, is again, it's a real, it's a real lifeblood of a community. You know, it drives the culture. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, you mentioned that during the campaign for mayor, you miss numerous events because of your business. Um, would you be able to take two days off of work to be at budget hearings here at City Hall? I'm sure I would be able to. My, uh, um, I've always had the, I mean, my business employees, uh, employee retention, employee quality it, it is it's the biggest hurdle that we always face. Um, I'm extremely lucky in that uh, the, the people I've always surrounded myself are completely capable. So whenever I need to take any time off, you know, even at the drop of a hat, uh, they, they, all, they all band together and take care of my stuff. Uh, and it's never, it's, it, it would never be an issue if, um, if, if that stuff comes up. Okay, I'll just follow up on that. Um, most council members serve two to three um, committees that meet outside of council uh, meetings second fourth would you have issues problems getting into those kind of meetings no my my, my schedule is always pretty wide open I mean at least not wide open but flexible okay uh, and uh, the uh, probably the only other person that uh, uh, that that that's really gonna come down on me is my wife <laughs> <laughs> but uh, she's she understands the the commitment that this uh, is going to take uh, and she's on board 100% okay thank you all right thank you mr. Stiefheider all right, thank you very much. Thank you. Next is John Schilk. Madam Mayor, Council Members, John Schilk, 520 CB. I moved here, I was 20 years old, 1973. You can do the math. Uh, the town was divided between young and old. It was divided between the university 
and the non-university residents. There was a lot of anger. And through the years, I've seen that lesson. It hasn't been completely a smooth road, but it has been in a positive direction. Now we have things like hands-on Oshkosh, where the students come out into the different neighborhoods and work on neighborhood projects a couple times a year. We have restaurants near the university that those of us from the town go to. We have restaurants on the east side, the south side, the west side that the university students are comfortable with. I love that. We've come a long way. We've also come a long way in the way the city looks. I don't think any of you are really old enough to remember how bad the streets were in 1973. Oh, yes, I do. You, you remember, and I'm not exaggerating, am I? No. Nope. No. We have nice infrastructure, nice streets, nice neighborhoods. I do a walking group with some elderly people three times a week, and we go along the river walk. What a great place to take a walk. Uh, we have all the growth on both sides of the river, and now more coming, river walk being extended. All the work going on now where the Pioneer stood. I miss the Pioneer, in fact, I got married there. But I see what's coming and it's, it's exciting. We uh, lost a lot of industry, but we're doing okay. And something you should all know, if you're ever traveling and you go to any aviation museum anywhere in the world and you have a question about anything, go to the docent and say, excuse me, I'm from Oshkosh and you are elevated to the level of a minor deity immediately <coughs> and they take care of you. So we have a lot of good things in this town and I want to see that continue. That's all I have to say. The council members have questions for Mr. Schilk. Deputy Mayor, Deputy Thank Herman. You. That's all right. Ah, <laughs> thanks, Mayor. Uh, same question I've asked every council member. What do you believe is the most important role of a city council member? Listen, then research, and then <coughs> act in a morally responsible manner. Okay. Thank you. Council Member Mugerauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. You mentioned the Pioneer. Um, I guess give us your view on, and I, I asked one other uh, person this similar question, the use of TIFs, the use of tax dollars to remove blight or to spur economic development uh, in the community. I was working for the city when we had the to-do several years ago. I think that's been dealt with and everyone in the city has learned a lesson on being careful. I'm comfortable with using TIFs because I think everyone would be cautious and make sure we make the right decisions. Other council members, any questions? I just a um, uh, question for you also, Mr. Schilk. Uh, are you involved with any boards or commissions or other agencies, organizations that you could uh, potentially have a conflict of interest if you were serving on council? I'm part of the core leadership team in the River East neighborhood. Uh, I assist Danny Stoley with her growing Oshkosh. I work with some of the elderly residents at Court Towers where Council Member Peschel works. If something comes up and I have to recuse myself, I recuse myself. It's, it's simple. Rather than have any gray area, just step back. Thank you. Certainly. All right. Uh, Mr. You. Ed Castern. Thank you, Mayor, and, and Councilman 
for giving me this opportunity. Every day I step, every day I stand up in my walker, and I, and I often think, how can I impact this community? I've been here 15 years. I graduated from UWO. It's been a, it's been a great. This city's been so great. It's, it's given back to me so much. <coughs> and one of the reasons why I'm running for the seat is I want to be a voice for the, for the disabled. I think the council needs, I think the council needs diversity. Whether it be coaching at Lords, whether it be um, having my own TV show called Making It Happen Access Community, what, what, what I do there is I, I interview people that have made, a, have made a big impact in the community or local businesses or, or people that have overcome challenges such as myself. Um, but yeah, I just want to be that voice for the, I just want to be that voice for the, for the disabled community and the community at hand because that is very important to the citizens of Oshkosh is being that voice and just listening because I think that's what's missing in, in today's society. Thank you. I, I open up the questions. Councilmember Mugarar. Thank you, Madam Mayor. What do you see as the single most important issue that we face here in Oshkosh? Um, disability access friendly, because sometimes when I'm wheeling or walking on the curb cuts in the city, they're very steep, very hard. So if I want to have access to, if I want to go independently to the store by myself or to the gas station, it's, it's hard for me to get up to the curb cuts. So I would work together with, with the city to, and the rest of the residents to, to try to come up with solutions to make that happen. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Thank you, Mr. Cashton, for applying. Um, appreciate your efforts. Um, I have asked this to every council member. What do you believe is the most important role that a city council member has? Being that voice for the community, because I've been here for 15 years, and I absolutely love this community and love what it's given to me. Thank you. Other questions for Mr. Cashton? All right. Thank you, Mr. Kessler. Thank you. Next, we have Michael Ford. <laughs> uh, first off, good evening. Um, had an opportunity to read through everybody's uh, statements before I got here. And just, it's a real testament, I think, to the public service motivation in this community. Um, and everyone's real positive, which is really cool. Or just one issue, folks, which is great. Um, so thank you for listening to me today. Uh, you all saw in my application materials uh, that my career is focused on teaching, researching, and improving uh, local government. And I'm always happy to talk anybody's ear off about that at any time. I think that would be an asset. But I know that simply having that skill set doesn't really make me qualified to represent uh, the city of Oshkosh. Uh, to me, this, this position is about serving as a bridge between the values of the community and the professional management of the city of Oshkosh. I lived and worked here since 2012. And at that time, I think I've demonstrated a commitment to and develop deep ties uh, in this community. So some examples. When I first got here, um, someone came to my door and wanted me to be a member of my neighborhood uh, planning committee. Currently, I serve as the president of the Millers Bay Neighborhood Association. And this experience has really shown me that you know, a, strong, a strong neighborhood leads to a strong city. Those connections are so important. And to build a strong neighborhood, you have to have a culture of inclusion, proactive transparency, and a proactive embrace um, of diversity. I also currently serve on the city plan commission that meets right over there. That's given me a real good eye into the economic development uh, tools and some of the, I guess, just some of the source documents that were even discussed earlier today. Um, in this city. It's been a real education and a privilege. Um, I've worked on the United Way's Women in Poverty Committee and on their Fiscal Health Committee. That gave me a look at some other issues and some of the deeper challenges in this city that we don't necessarily talk about, um, that we don't see in the front pages, but things like food insecurity, refugee resettlement, mental health. Um, you see these in grant proposals, um, and they're real issues. Um, they're there, and it'd be really mean that Oshkosh is a city for everybody. We have to address those things. Uh, I'm currently on the food co-op selection team. That was a more uplifting one. That just shows me that when the city puts its mind to something, citizens can all coalesce and really get something exciting, <laughs> something that was real abstract uh, that's now becoming real. Happy to be a part of it. Um, I've also had the privilege of giving talks to many community groups, you know, Evergreen, League of Women Voters, uh, UWO African American Student Association, Leadership Oshkosh, Oshkosh for, Ed Oshkosh for Education, 
and others. And what's great about that is not necessarily the opportunity to talk, even though I don't mind talking, uh, it's to be able to listen and talk to these diverse groups about things that they care about, whether that's local government, whether that's the weather, that was the Evergreen talk, that was my favorite, um, or anything else, just listening. So all this civic engagement, I think, has helped me understand the values of the community. But the fun stuff, I think, is what makes Oshkosh great. And that's rec league softball on Thursday night. We lose every game, my team, but it's fun. We're out there with people from all walks of life, having a good time. Um, it's fishing with my boys, whether it's at the park or on the ice. Uh, just chatting people up at church coffee hour. To me, that's the stuff that makes community, and that's what, what really has made me fall in love uh, with this city. I do have specific priorities that flow from the city's strategic plan that I care about. Uh, I'm going to add Chick-fil-A and the uh, amusement park to those because my two sons in particular would love that. Gives me an excuse to eat that and ride a carousel. Um, but I believe in a, uh, a proactive transparency that makes city documents and policies more accessible to all. So even things like meeting people where they're at in terms of their language and making sure all of our PDFs are searchable. These may seem like small, boring things, but these are the things that allow you to connect um, with citizens. I want to have continued progress on controlling our debt service costs. I don't think debt should be the top priority of our city. Um, and I'm pleased with the direction that's been going. It's been going down. I want to, want to exercise good oversight and see that happening. Um, I'm committed to continuing our positive economic development. We make this a safe city where people want to work, where people want to live. Um, but broadly, I think the unifying value in this city is not membership in a demographic group. It's not being a North Sider. It's not being a South Sider. It's not being a member of a political party. It's that we all believe in the city of Oshkosh. We're here because we want to be here. Uh, to me, that is the dominant value. Um, so I'm dedicated to, to working hard to be part of a high-functioning council that can improve the quality of life um, in the city. Um, and I do want to say that I am fully committed to running in 2020, whether you pick me or not. Um, and I really appreciate uh, this opportunity and look forward to answering any questions uh, that I can. Thank you. <clears throat> council member questions for Mr. Ford. Council member Mugerauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. So, and uh, one, thank you for the interest. Uh, two, thank you for serving on the plan commission. Yeah. Um, and serving on that commission may give you, uh, you know, a unique insight as to some of the things that come before council. Yeah. So I guess uh, what's one of the most important issues that we do face um, that's something you see you know, on that plan commission economically or developmentally? Yeah, well, I think it's see, these, these concepts I talked about, like diversity and inclusion, a lot of us have talked about this kind of in the abstract. To me, we have two major opportunities, the Sawdust District and Lakeshore. We can actually operationalize those concepts. These are once in a generation opportunities that'll kind of create the future for at least my kids, well, all of us uh, moving forward. So I think those right now are the most important things. <coughs> sure. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. And my question tonight, what do you feel is the most important role as a city council member if you were appointed? Yeah, I think resources are finite, needs are infinite. Um, that's the challenge we face. Values are contested. I think a council member serves as that bridge between those contested values, as messy as it can be, um, and giving the city and professional management the tools to navigate that, that calculus uh, dealing with needs. Um, you do that by listening and by proactively listening, by actually getting out there in the community, attending neighborhood events. Don't wait for people to come to you. Go to them. Thank you. Councilmember Peschel. Sure, thank you. Um, you were talking about um, a level of accessibility, uh, accessible tran transparency, yeah. making um, documents more accessible to the community, more searchable, yeah. uh, going out uh, to other places in the community. Yeah. Take a minute to just elaborate more on that on that concept. Yeah, well, an example. I, I work in the uh, MPA department at uh, UWO. We do the citizen survey. Uh, in the past, we, we, it's a great instrument, it's a great tool, but we get one person of color that responds to it. That doesn't really help us, right, understand the needs of that community. Um, actually taking that survey out, and I give my colleague, Dr. Larson, credit for, for doing that, going out there and actually meeting people at places of business, heck, going door to door, uh, making sure that you can, <laughs> you can get, get their opinion. Um, part of it is, whether it's translation services or just being able to, to give frontline bureaucrats, the people interacting with citizens, some cultural training uh, to know that when they're dealing with a refugee from a certain country, there's certain, you know, maybe it should be a male or a female, or there's certain cultural norms that need to be respected if you really want to listen to them, hear them. And I have a follow-up question uh, regarding the citizen survey and diversity. Um, so how do you, I guess specific to that, you know, how do you see increasing public engagement 
in that type of survey and uh, more particularly in being representative of our community? Yeah, I think part of that is we have to recruit ambassadors from individual individual communities that can help break down uh, those barriers because I mean, I, me showing up at certain doors isn't going to make people open up and want to talk. Um, we need to find, I don't know if there's funding for that, but we need to find funding for that grant or another way to train people that can actually go out there and get some of those opinions and views. It's a, I mean, I believe in social equity and that every resident owns a share of our government. All, we all have a right to a voice to be elevated. But that takes proactiveness on our part. We can't wait for people to come to us. We've got to go to them. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Madam Mayor. One final question. You mentioned that you were a lobbyist in Madison yeah. uh, in your resume. Um, in the last four or five years, the city slash council has been more engaged with the League of Municipalities and have gone down and spoken in Madison. Yeah. Do you believe that that's a role a city should play or should we be sitting on the sidelines and take whatever Madison gives us? No, we absolutely have to be, have to be proactive. Um, the fact is there, there's only so much that the city can do financially. Uh, we were talking about kid districts earlier. I mean, that's one of very, you know, not many tools we have for formal economic development. So I think it's absolutely essential. I've, I've worked with the league on many projects in the past, and um, they have so many resources there. And you're not there. If you're not active in those debates in Madison, uh, there's a good chance you're going to be on the negative side of a decision. So you've got to be present. OK, thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Allison Knauts. Hello, Madam Mayor, Council Members, City Manager, City Attorney, and City Clerk, thank you for your service, your time, and consideration. I am in my late 20s. I'm a wife, and I am a mother of two, seeking to participate on City Council as I represent a generation seeking to take responsibility and contribute to what is happening. I'm invested in Oshkosh as my children will grow and develop here in this community, impacted by the environment around them as they will attend the Oshkosh Area School District, impacted by the economic health of our city, diversity of the population, and the continued improvement in Oshkosh. Uh, my children love the parks and the library, and I never am sure what park we are going to as they have nicknames for each. We have the Red and Blue Park, the Pirate Park, and the park by Hazel's grandma's house. Uh, but it is when we are there and the joy they they experience that makes me want to contribute to what our city is doing. Creating and providing a welcoming, diverse, and equitable city, not just for you and I, but the future generations that will inherit it. I've been a member of the community since att uh, attending elementary school at E. Cook, Webster Stanley Middle School, Oshkosh North High School, and finishing at UWO. Currently, I'm employed at a local nonprofit employment and training organization serving Winnebago County. I've seen the economic development and currently partner with GoEDC on transportation initiatives like Winnebago Catch a Ride and the workplace solutions happening in Oshkosh. I've experienced the maintenance, revitalization, and improvement of our infrastructure as I've lived near construction by Evergreen Retirement as well as the new Oshkosh Corporation building project. I continually interact with our low-income community members and at-risk individuals that rely on a strong and present public safety and health departments. Through my professional experience working with the diverse social economic backgrounds and cultures in our city, I've learned the barriers they face daily affecting their quality of life, from transportation, low wages, food insecurity, and housing. The positive relationships and collaborations that I have built to help address some of these barriers would be a benefit as it brings unique perspective and vision when assessing Oshkosh. I'm involved in the Winnebago Land Housing Coalition comprised of 25 agencies in Oshkosh addressing the housing issues and developing solutions. I am also involved in the Jail Reduction Committee with the Winnebago County District Attorney's Office that is working together to provide resources to individuals released into our community to address their needs so they can be positive and productive citizens. Having the knowledge of these grassroots efforts occurring in our city would benefit the council when engaging with the many city departments. 
and the boards and commissions as an example planning services our community development and our police departments just to name a few as we as a city can engage and be part of a solution and involved in collaborative efforts I desire to learn and listen to the many departments in Oshkosh to understand what they value, their key performance indicators or KPIs, and how that intersects with our community. In my current employment, our success is based on our KPIs reviewed monthly. I continually am involved in the process of being proactive to ensure strong outcomes are provided and reported to develop engagement with the staff and the community. The departments work hard in Oshkosh to ensure a strong and healthy city and I want to ensure that the departments are given the tools to be successful as well as keep our focus on deliverable and measurable results I will advocate for the education of City Council's goals as it represents an opportunity to our citizens and businesses of all sizes it is for these reasons I seek to be appointed to City Council to humbly serve its citizens today and to provide a stronger future for the generations to come thank you Thank you. Council questions? Council Member Allison Osby. Thank you. So obviously you have a um, pretty broad range of uh, experience in dealing with a number of, of issues surrounding the city. So when you look at the, the responsibilities of the city council, what do you think is the single biggest issue that the council will face going into the next one to three years? That is a great question and I really do believe uh, in my current role I am working with individuals that are in that low income bracket and we have a lot of individuals that are just they have a lot of barriers to employment which affect our economic health of our city as well as working poor so they are not making enough to provide for their families relying on government um, badger care food share although they are there and a great resource for individuals when needed I really do believe by providing the wages transportation and housing necessary for these individuals so they can move forward become self-sufficient and provide for their families which in turn affects generations to come uh, so I think there are many different issues that play into it um, I am passionate about transportation as it does create barriers for individuals to get to and from locations affecting children employment and limiting um, where somebody can find employment deputy mayor herman thank you mayor so that being said um you feel the social issues are what's facing the city the most but as a council member what do you feel is the most important role as a council member so I believe I can mold my professional experience into as a council member being aware of um, the resources that we provide our water safe streets uh, revitalization uh, you know the Oshkosh Corporation building that brings economics brings people into our city uh, I recently read that there are a lot of Millennials moving to the Oshkosh area we have lots of different momentum happening in Oshkosh so being able to mold some of that knowledge and understanding to the goals of our City Council to ensure that the department serving our community whether it's public safety um, working with the city manager those are the opportunities that I feel I could add value with my experience and knowledge thank you councilmember Mugarauer thank you madam mayor um, I guess a little bit about the role of, of, of council. We've, I think a couple have talked about it a little bit, but um, council members, uh, we attend roughly two council meetings a month. We have other boards and commissions that we are appointed to. In fact, I think we've, we all got appointed to a few tonight. Uh, in addition to uh, other, um, other meetings throughout the year, during the day, at night, um, there's a fair amount of a time commitment. Mm -hmm. um, do you have the ability to meet those time commitments? Do you have that uh, in your schedule and to, to take the time as I mentioned earlier when I held it up uh, every Friday before a council meeting 483 pages would be the last one um, that's a small novel but you've got to digest in uh, about 48 hours to get prepared for Tuesday night mm -hmm. do you have that do you have that ability I do and I have done my due diligence before coming 
and attending here to ensure that I have the opportunity and the time to commit to this as I do respect uh, the council members and everyone who is here the time that is spent researching understanding as there are many different aspects to a situation so before tonight I did it um, review the agenda try to educate and best understand what is happening in our community and the um, issues brought before you so I would commit that time and ensure that is a priority and I also do believe that is also teaching my children a work ethic strong work ethic and showing them that they can be part of the future and change thank you I just uh, have one question and that is um, you mentioned transportation uh, well wages transportation and housing being um, uh, one of the greater talent or as a group greater mm -hmm. challenges uh, for serving your clients and I guess my question would be um, as a council member do you do you have thoughts as to how that wage gap um, could be addressed as we uh, look at bring attracting retaining businesses here in the community so like I said I work very closely with uh, greater Oshkosh economic development corporation and it they've been very enlightening I work directly with employers and have friends who own businesses and it isn't an easy solution as there are many different facets that play into it um, there's the health care component when they start raising wages there's the benefit cliff that occurs and Oshkosh uh, and other areas are working together through the point initiative to try and trying to address that benefits cliff because that does keep individuals in their employment um, maintaining those low wages because they're afraid once they make a higher wage they will lose their benefits through the state but they might not have a wage sufficient for their family so it's kind of this <laughs> hard spot trying to figure those pieces out but I think through the resources and the knowledge that I've gained working with our employers and go EDC we'd be able to have some professionals and people of research able to provide understanding to that topic thank you all right thank you again for thank applying. you Paula Esslinger Good evening, Council. Paul Esslinger, 2350 Iowa Drive in Oshkosh. Um, I think a council member must be able to handle and adjust to several situations and categories. I'll go over these categories and express why I feel why I'd be the best person for the position. Number one is interaction with the public, and I think this is probably the most important. Um, as you probably know, I was a council member for 11 years and handled hundreds of calls and meetings with the public. As mayor, I had the pleasure to showcase Oshkosh by the following means. A national television phone interview with Stuart Barney when the Oshkosh Corporation received their huge defense contract. Um, met with high-ranking military and defense contractors with a successful Oshkosh Corp paint facility TIF announcement. Um, people from all over the world when I was mayor met them at, with the mayor's breakfast handed out the key to the city to EAA VIPs and <clears throat> as an ambassador to the Chamber of Commerce here in Oshkosh. But I guess my favorite interaction was just meeting with average, quote, average Oshkosh citizens. They're probably the smartest <laughs> of all the group. Uh, number two is working with the city staff, uh, taking what staff would like to do and comparing and contest, contrasting that with the public opinion, having the courage to let staff know you disagree with them and their direction, and taking the time and telling staff and employees they're doing a good job. So you have kind of an inverse there. Number three, I call the inner workings as a council member. Boards and commissions. I was on the Redevelopment Authority, Plan Commission, Transit Review, and Landmarks Commission. Uh, I worked on the following items when I was on the council previously. Uh, process of hiring a new city manager, Mr. Roloff. Uh, flood control, control. Uh, we still have work to do, obviously, on that, but um, we've come a long way in, in that regard. Uh, clearer TIF district procedures, the implementation of, implementation of PAYGO TIFs. Uh, State of the city address was implemented at that time when I was on the council. 
and creation of a long range financing committee I was involved with. Number four, working with other council members. Council members bring different visions and backgrounds. It's interesting to hear other views and work to do what's best for the community with those different opinions. It's okay to disagree. A mixed view council brings better outcomes. Number five, community programs and outreach. I was proud to be a part of the group to bring back <clears throat> Pollock Water Park. Served as president of then OCAT, now OCMS. Uh, that was their, their friends. Produced a few shows on OCAT through the years. My, the last one I had was Oshkosh Diaries. And when I could afford to, I donated my council salary back to the senior center. My, my job, my position on the council, I wasn't doing for the money. And at that time, uh, I could donate back. So uh, I did give back to the community in that regard. And then I have another category. I'm a downtown property owner. So I want to see that part of Oshkosh continue to redevelop. And you have to be able to take some criticism as a council member. I've done that. Um, you have to understand people won't like your opinions, but you have to understand <coughs> others have the right to their opinion. So with that, we'll take any questions. Thank you. <coughs> council Member Krause. Um, on your application, <clears throat> why you wish to serve the city um, you're right you're not trying to get this position to take advantage and run for the seat next year sorry you're looking at it as a, like you just have a lot of experience you're trying to do a pinch hit good thing for this community yeah no good question I think one of the when we talked about mr. Buckholz um, great guy one of the things that we had a bunch of candidates at that time also and some of the people that were running, some council members, not myself, but some council members thought it was a detriment because they wanted this one year to get the experience as a launching pad into running for the position when it came up next time. I personally don't have any problem with it, but I didn't know if that was going to be an issue with any council members, so I'm just making a pledge that if I get this position, I am not running for the position next year. <clears throat> Thank you. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor. Not sure why you want to throw a hat back into this rat race, but <laughs> thanks for applying, Paul. Thanks. Um, you, you probably answered it in quite a few ways, but uh, you've been on the council a long time. You were the mayor. So you know the role of a council member. What do you feel still is the number one role of a city yeah. council member? Uh, that's, that's a great question. It's real simple, but when you start thinking about it, it's, it's not easy. And mm -hmm. the simple part is, you're a representative, okay? You were elected by people on a, on a second Tuesday of the night, whatever year that was, and they put their faith, they put their trust in you. You had debates, you said you were, what you were going to do, you said what you were not going to do, uh, you took phone calls, you met with people, and so those people have put their faith in, in you. Now, you go to meetings and you learn things. Now you can have someone tell you they want you to do such and such, you go to meetings where you get educated on any particular issue, and it may enlighten you as to why someone wants something done. So you, you know you really have to you have to temper someone when they say don't do this or do this. You really have to say, well, you know, there may be. And, and I remember when I was in a council, it's always been said that council members have their mind made up when they come to the council, just take the vote and be done with it. And, and I guess in a lot of cases, I, I had my mind made up because I did my homework. But there was always that time when someone would come up and say, did you think about this? And I didn't. And so then you sit there and say, you have to weigh that now with the information that you've received. And that's where it can be difficult. Thank you. Councilmember Mugerauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mr. Esslinger, thank you for applying. Um, I guess my one question has to do with our budget or and within our, our CIP and our improvements to the community. Any particular area that you take exception with or that you uh, would like to see changed, improvements, anything within that structure? Yeah. In the time that I was on the council and even today, the thing that I hear as being a representative in the past, listening to uh, residents is our infrastructure. You know, roads have always been, we've, we, some other folks have talked about that. Uh, it's been our Achilles heel. They continue to be. And so um, 
listening to people, and I don't know if the citizen survey, I think infrastructure was, but wasn't number one, it was up there. So that's something that's something that we need to really, really look at. And, you know, we all like to do, we all like to spend money on other things. Um, but I'm a realtor. And if I take someone into a house and the foundation is cracked and it's leaking and it's junk, I don't care what amenities you have in the house, they're not buying a house. So we have to make sure that the foundation is intact. Um, that, that's number one. I mean, that, that's the role of government. <coughs> and then the other thing, as I know it was talked about, is, is our debt. Our debt is out of hand and, and needs to be reined in. All right. Thank you, Mr. Esslinger, so much. Thank you. Lindsay Erickson. Good evening, Mayor, City Council members. My name is Lindsay Erickson, and, and I'm uh, asking for your vote for City Council. Uh, so thank you for your time. I know this is a long process. We're almost there. Um, and I appreciate you working to make this a more accessible process uh, to apply for the seat. Uh, so I want to be on City Council because I believe that my perspectives, uh, as a millennial, someone under the age of 30, a young woman, a renter in the city, uh, someone who is not from here but uh, moved here for work um, and someone who grew up in a working class family uh, needs to be represented on council. Uh, in my five years working in the city at the Winnebago County Health Department and two and a half years li living in the city as a renter, um, I have experienced some of the issues that our, uh, our residents face. So I know what it's like to try and find rental housing in the city uh, that's both affordable, decent, uh, but also close to my work and transportation. Uh, I know what it's like to move to a new city and kind of feel like an outsider trying to find my place. Uh, and I also know what it's tr like to uh, want to just make it and get by, but also to thrive and find my place in the community. I also value true community engagement uh, and representation in deci dis decision making. Uh, so at the health department, I have experienced engaging people, especially young people, in public health issues. Uh, and so I see the, the value, the true value in get, getting different perspectives in the room uh, to deal with the challenges that we face. I also mentor at the Boys and Girls Club in Oshkosh and currently serve as a member on the Transit Advisory Board. Uh, so I see that the decisions council makes has a real impact on people's lives. Uh, so, if appointed as city council, I would make sure that we get the right, uh, at the diverse voices in the room so that we can really make uh, well-rounded decisions about the complex set of challenges and opportunities that we have in Oshkosh. I also have experience working collaboratively uh, to move past division and reach consensus on some tough issues. So, I work in coalitions uh, focused on some really difficult issues like uh, suicide and substance use. And I'm willing and ready to have those tough conversations and ask those questions uh, and make some difficult decisions by being open to other people's opinions and experiences. My ultimate goal always is to make sure that we're improving people's lives in Oshkosh. So uh, to address some of the questions I'm sure you might have about me, uh, do I see it as a conflict of interest working for the county? I do not, so we don't have any contracts with the city uh, that would financially impact my position at the health department, uh, and our budget is voted on by the county board. Uh, I do see that as a, an opportunity and a benefit, uh, having that connection with the county. Uh, also, I am under the age of 30, uh, like some people have mentioned, uh, and I do have experience working on policy. I've worked with the Wisconsin Women's Network Policy Institute to train women across the state on how local and state policy, what the policy process is, and how to advocate for issues that impact their lives. Um, so I'm young, but I'm willing to ask questions. I'm willing to do the work. Um, and as a millennial, not to speak for a whole generation, but I do understand some of the things that uh, it would take to uh, recruit and really invest in uh, younger people to make sure that uh, they stay in the city. So in conclusion, uh, we have an opportunity right now to make sure that we keep Oshkosh moving forward in the right direction. Um, 
my vision for Oshkosh is that we value and invest in residents uh, and that we uh, are open to different experiences in this city um, so that we can really hear from residents and meet them where they're at. Uh, I, I'm confident that I have the skills and energy necessary to do that work uh, and I'm asking for your vote for City Council. Thank you. Thank you. Do council members have questions for Ms. Erickson? Council member Muberauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. <clears throat> um, what do you believe to be the single most important issue that we're going to face next, what's it, whether it's the next year that uh, you may serve on this council uh, and or the next maybe three years? I think Ms. Uh, Allison Osby had asked a similar question earlier, but what's the single most important issue that we could face? Yeah, so I think it's, it's really complex. It's not one single issue. Uh, from what I've learned working in public health, right now in Oshkosh, people, uh, there's many residents who don't feel connected to this community, don't feel like they belong to this community. So I think we really need to do the work, um, like Dr. Ford mentioned before, of making uh, this transparent and really understandable for residents and how to engage in this process. Uh, and we need to be welcoming and open to different experiences of what residents are facing in the city. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor. I ask this of every council or candidate, so I'll ask you this one. Um, what do you feel is the most important role as a city council member? Mm -hmm. So as a city council member, we represent the city. Uh, I think council re uh, sets the tone for the city and is the sounding board for residents in the city. Um, so I think as a member, I would do the work necessary uh, to really hear from all sides, consider all different perspectives, and ultimately make the decision that I think is best uh, for the residents. Okay, thanks. Councilman Krause. I think as every generation comes and goes, every generation understands how important diversity and inclusion is to a community and how well it advances in the future. Um, what does diversity and inclusion mean and what can we do to make it better in Oshkosh for everybody? Yeah. Um, so I think diversity is a tough issue. We can't just say that we're working on diversity and think it's going to happen. Um, I think we need to first uh, ask residents what they think the solution is. Um, I think we need to look at representation and who is at the table discussing this. Um, and I think the people who are uh, impacted by um, you know, not feeling welcome to this community, not feeling represented, uh, needs to be part of that conversation. Uh, we won't have all the answers, but I think we need to start the conversation. Um, but I think we need also need to look at how is uh, city council, is this a welcoming place? Is it transparent? Um, do fe people uh, feel like they understand what's actually the decision that city council makes? <coughs> council Member Mover Hour. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, Speaking for myself, I happen to think that one of the single, single most important things as a council member you do is participate in the budget process. Mm -hmm. It's a long process and uh, it takes a lot of time and effort and it's, it's how we function. It's how we operate the city and um, $75 million we spend every year to run the city in addition to another $60 million to, to fix things. Have you had a chance to review our, our, our budget and if so, is there anything in there that you have an issue with or that you would like to see? more of. Mm -hmm. So to be honest, I have not read the, the full budget, um, but I fully intend, if appointed, that I would do the work to research that. I think um, our budget needs to reflect what our values are um, as a city, and um, we need to be investing in things that we think are going to improve the city and investing in, in the residents. So I would do the work and uh, look at the budget more in depth. Thank you. So, um, Ms. Erickson, uh, you mentioned uh, social connectedness and uh, a lack thereof. Um, if you were uh, appointed on council, what are some ways that you would attempt to engage those who feel disconnected? Mm -hmm. So I think, like I mentioned before, I think we have to ask the people um, what would work for them, why, what are the barriers to them, 
being engaged uh, in the process that it currently is, but also be willing to meet people where they're at um, and being open to what their uh, solutions are. I think the people who are uh, closest to the problem need, need to be part of the solution. They know best. Um, so. All right, thank you. If there are no other questions, thank you so much. Thank you. Tom Peck, Jr. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Council members, and colleagues. Uh, I'm here tonight for the same reason I took out nominating papers 10 years ago. I took out nominating papers this past election. Many of the things I heard tonight are things that were addressed on the eight years that I just finished on council. We had, uh, my leadership on long-range finance put forth a long uh, long-term debt program that has our city's debt on a downward trend. We are now being noticed by Moody's for that. Uh, we have invested in our infrastructure. We have created a new TIF policy. We have significantly done great things with economic development. One of the things I ran on eight years ago, creating a public-private partnership for economic development in this city, and we see what, what benefits have reaped to the city from that. We've moved the city forward related to infrastructure. I want to, for the same reason I put my name on the line this past spring, to continue to move the city forward on the progress that we've made. And to reiterate, many of those things were addressed tonight by each of the people that are running for this, or that are being applied for this job. So basically, I've always been a person that will say what I do, what I will do, and then go out and do it. We've done that the past eight years, and I hope to have the honor to do that for the next one year to fill this open seat. Intimately knowledgeable about the budget. Have read tonight's uh, agenda. Mr. Herman, as I've always said, council makes decisions in the best interest of all of the residents of our community. I am not a one-issue candidate. I truly believe that this is a nonpartisan office. We are here to represent everyone. And that is what I have done and what I will continue to do should I have the honor of being appointed to this open seat. Councilmember Allison Osby. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Peck, with your experience and obviously um, knowledge of, of what the council has gone through, what do you see as the most significant or top two significant issues that the council will be facing moving forward? First and foremost is budget. We have increasing needs and decreasing revenues. We have to figure ways to get creative on generating revenues. We have to look into grant funding. We also have to look at things that are there ways that we can reduce expenses. So we have to always, as everything, you always have to look outside the box. There is no such thing as perfection, but there is continuous improvement. And that's what I think we need to continually do, is to, to, to do. Council Member Mugrauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, it's an awkward question, but I'll ask it because you can handle it. A month ago, uh, the citizens uh, of Oshkosh made a decision. Uh, they chose um, uh, three of the five that were, uh, that were elected. You were the fourth. Um, why should I? Why should we circumvent their will? They, they did not elect you. Why should we? 3,922 voters in Oshkosh voted for me. That's 40% of the ballots that were cast in the city in this spring election. There are 3,922 people who spoke and voted for Tom Peck Jr. None of the other 13 people that are here received those votes. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor. Mr. Peck, to be it, like everybody else, what do you believe is the number one role of a city council member? I, I indicated a short time ago that it's to represent all of the citizens of Oshkosh. That's the beauty of being in a, not a district or an aldermanic system. 
we are elected at large. And so therefore we have to serve and uh, make the in decisions in the best interest of the whole. And that comes by listening, doing homework, listening again, getting people's opinions, then distilling it all down into what decision is going to be the best for Oshkosh so that it can be better today than it was yesterday, but not as good as it can be tomorrow. And there are some great things happening in Oshkosh. And many of them, as I indicated, happened over the past eight years. That's why I'm here tonight. That's why I put my name in in the spring, to continue on with what we're doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And Adam Belcarelli. Good evening, everybody. I'd like to start by saying, uh, by commending my fellow candidates. Um, when the call went out to fill the vacant seat, none of us knew if anyone was going to fill out that application, and each of us decided to answer that call, and that's commendable. So for me, I am a 14-year resident of Oshkosh, raising a family uh, in our community. I have two kids in the Oshkosh School District, uh, ages 10 and 6. I am a very involved community, uh, community member, where I sit on the uh, Bike and Pedestrian Advisory Committee, as well as the Winnebago County Rethink Coalition. And we've done uh, community projects recently, like the Bike Gosh 2019, and the pop-up crosswalk in the Sacred Heart neighborhood that have both been huge successes. Um, I'm also part of the community book read of the Palaces for the People through the Rethink Coalition. So as a, because of my desire to be useful to my community, uh, a few years ago I was prompted to get my master's in public administration and become familiar with uh, UW Oshkosh, with area businesses, nonprofits, the culture, uh, and develop a comfort with budgets, CIP, economic development, intergovernmental relationship, and Parley Pro. I work currently in change management, where we help organizations overcome resistance to change, develop leaders, and grow. My previous work has given me a unique perspective on infrastructure design and accessibility, and I'm personally interested in social justice and equity, particularly in the areas of income and opportunity. I believe sustainability and technology are important drivers, uh, financial drivers particularly. Uh, things like the C Click Fix app that the city implemented a few years ago, um, I think are a great way to get that kind of feedback in a sustainable way. I also believe the community is the answer to all of our challenges. Coming together for the common good is the best and most sustainable way to fix the troubles that are, we are presented with. <clears throat> I believe strong neighborhoods and a con connected community, along with sustainable economic improvement and efficient, responsive, accountable local government are what we need. To answer uh, Steve's question already, because uh, I know he's going to ask it, the most important thing that a council member can do is ethically maintain the public trust and provide responsive government to citizens of Oshkosh. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Bellacarelli. Do council members have questions? Council member Allison Osby. Thank you. What do you see as the most important thing that the city can do to improve economic development in the city of Oshkosh? The most important thing the city can do that is the, um, in economic development as well as many other areas is to attract and retain diverse young professional talent. I think the more that we have the people in town that have those new ideas that want to see uh, development and growth, you get support for those initiatives, that is the, the number one driver there. Thank you, Madam Mayor. 
Um, again, this has been a consistent question I've asked as well. Uh, moving forward, what do you see as the top one or two issues that the city council and city <coughs> staff will be facing? Issues that the city council will face um, is going to be how do we keep our community connected? How do we get people involved and engaged and active in the initiatives that we're putting forth or that community members are bringing to us. Okay, thank you. Council Member Mugerauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I asked it earlier, the topic of diversity uh, is an important one in this community. Uh, comes up often in, in many different discussions. What is the role or what should be the role of city government uh, in that discussion should we be leading that charge? Should we be, uh, how should we support that, those efforts? Yeah. So uh, like I said, I believe attracting and retaining diverse professional talent is the number one goal that way. So uh, the city does a lot of hiring um, in, in many different departments. And so looking to other areas and uh, communities for that recruitment is one of the big ways the city can impact that. The other thing can be events like unity in the community and supporting uh, diverse organizational efforts that are going on in nonprofits uh, and in community organizations throughout the city to give people a sense of belonging and have them feel connected to what we're doing here. All right, uh, Mr. Valcarelli, I just uh, have one question, and that is, um, what, do, what do you see, or how do you see the impact of council policy decisions with your background in public administration uh, impacting future generations in the city of Oshkosh? I believe the local decisions that get made have the greatest impact on citizens. So I believe everything that we decide is really hitting home for every one of our citizens. So it's the importance that gets placed on all of these individual things directly impact the lives people are living here in Oshkosh. Thank you so much. Anything further? Thank you again Thank to you. all of the candidates for putting yourselves uh, through this rather rigorous process. Um, we will next take public comments uh, regarding any of the applicants and the public comments would be from anyone in the uh, audience who is not an applicant that would like to speak to this process. Do we have anyone registered? No one is registered. All right, then I would uh, ask council if they're interested in putting forth a motion for a short recess. So moved. Second. Take the roll. Herman? Aye. Crosey? Aye. Mugenauer? <clears throat> Aye. Peschel? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. O'Mary? Aye. Carried six. All right. Shall we say 10 minutes? Meet back at 810. <laughs> The Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. 
Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is Gov TV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is Gov TV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is Gov TV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is Gov TV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all Gov TV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly.
the Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV The Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. The Oshkosh Common Council is currently in a break. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. This is GovTV, opening accessibility and understanding of local government, helping you to be informed and involved. Also streaming live and on demand at oshkoshmedia.org and radio simulcast on Oshkosh FM 101.9. Like us on Facebook at our Oshkosh Media page. For a schedule of all GovTV programming, visit our website at oshkoshmedia.org. Please stay with us. Coverage will resume shortly. We'll now reconvene the May 14, 2019 Ashkosh Common Council meeting.
So next, we will move on to council discussion before nominations are called. Council Member Mugrauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, well, it's been a, a long two hours, right, for everybody sitting out there. Um, first, thank you um, to everyone who put their name in the hat, um, showed up, and uh, for the interest level. It's very much appreciated, um, so thank you for that. We have a very good or very good mix of candidates, all different backgrounds, experiences, ages, um, which is good to see, uh, especially when we talk about diversity and um, the different issues in this community and just trying to get different viewpoints. So I want to um, appreciate, just vocally appreciate that, that all of you came out for that. Um, the one thing I'd like to point out or the one thing I just want to remind people of, um, you know, only one gets to get picked. So that's 13 of you that still have some uh, a high level of interest in this community. And I would encourage you highly, if you are not serving on a board and commission, to get active on those boards and commissions. Um, the, the passion you showed tonight, we need that. We need more of it. And we'd love to have you. So please uh, consider applying, even if there's not an opening currently, put your name in the hat. Um, there will always be openings at some point. Um, if it's not on one, it may be on the other, and you may be asked to serve on, on something else. So please consider doing that. With that, um, I'll turn it over. Council Member Krause. I wanted to thank everybody for applying, and I know it's rough stepping up, and it's sometimes nervous, nerve-wracking getting up here and putting yourself out there. Um, I'm very happy with the group we got. I think a lot of you guys would be great on council. We got young, we got old, we got men and women, we got every every race pretty much up there. Um, the real question is, do we want to look to the past success or the future success, the past experience or future experience? Um, that's the thing I'm struggling with right now. I was looking forward to tonight. I was kind of dreading tonight because I looked through all the resumes. I thought, before I looked at them, I thought, I hope this is an easy decision. I hope somebody stands out. I think a lot of you guys stood out tonight. So like Mr. Murgrauer said, if you're not on boards and commissions, if you don't get picked tonight, sign up for one and advance and run next year, run in two years. Um, there's a lot, of, a lot of people out there that should be proud of what they said tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Peschel. Sure. Um, I want to thank all of you for um, putting your heart and your soul out there tonight for us. Um, we truly appreciate it. Uh, we really do. Um, it takes a lot to doing this. Um, uh, and I, I think what's, what's really important to realize is that you all have special gifts that you could bring to this seat right here. Every single one of you could do that. And for, for the one that gets here, um, they're lucky because they get, we get to choose them and we get to put them there and they get to take the next steps to shaping for the next year. But it doesn't stop what each and one of you could individually do in your community, which is already a lot. Acknowledge that before anything, uh, which, what, what all of you brought up here was a very talented pool of candidates but in essence, I want to reiterate that, candidates. Um, you know, take that, take that plunge. Next year around or the year after, uh, take it when you're ready to do that. So um, I think it's really important to acknowledge um, that a couple of us uh, have, have done this process already where we've had to appoint someone. I, re I remember back when Mayor Esslinger uh, took this seat is that it was a it was a very tumultuous night. Um, it was a long night, just like this, um, a little bit more intense from what I remember uh, it being. Uh, and and I think tonight offers a much easier decision <laughs> because we have such a talented pool of people. It's just it's just great. So um, I'm not nervous about the person that's going to be sitting up here next to me. I'm excited for that, no matter who that will be. So, um, but I'm, I'm excited to choose now. My energy's ready to choose. So, thank you. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, this is my third time around. Uh, I guess that makes me kind of old on the council, maybe not, <laughs> 10 years. 
But um, this is the, by far the most talented pool of candidates we've had since I've been on council to appoint uh, a position. And it's a difficult appointment. I know Mr. Preschel's excited. I find <laughs> it very difficult because there'll be a, you know, disappointed citizens and there'll be disappointed candidates who think that they should have been appointed and why didn't they? Um, it's tough. I think actually running a campaign is easier <laughs> than uh, picking the, the, the uh, council seat because it, it does come down to one person. But that being said, that's something, that's why we got elected. That's something our rules require us to do is to fill that vacant seat and we will do that tonight. Um, as other council members mentioned about boards and commissions, one thing the mayor is proposing is alternates to boards and commissions. So if there is one that you're interested in that currently doesn't have an opening, um, maybe you can be an alternate and we'll get into that further discussion in the future. But um, there are opportunities obviously and all of you know that a lot of you are serving on boards and commissions now. A lot of you are serving on other boards throughout the community. So we know you're engaged. We know you'll continue to be engaged. And obviously there's an election right around the corner as there always is because the council turns over three, three positions can be turned over in any given election or three slash mayor. So uh, plenty of opportunity for anybody that wishes to continue to uh, move forward and um, go in that direction. So with that, I guess we can move forward. There. Council Member Allison Asby. Thank you, uh, Madam Mayor. Thank you to the candidates. Uh, it has been mentioned a couple times. This is my third time going through this process. I don't know that it's anyone's favorite and we've always talked about this is the most awkward interview ever. And so I so appreciate um, not only your patience in, in going through the number of applicants, but also your courage to come up and speak. Um, some, uh, that's a part of their, their careers or was a part of their careers. And for others, it might be something new because they tend to be more in the background. Um, this by far, definitely is the most talented pool I've ever seen. I happen to mention to um, Council Member Herman um, that this gives me great hope that maybe I could retire and because uh, I see the next, next I guess, generation of, of council that's, that's coming up. I would say, I bet you if you ask any one of, of the six of us up here, there is probably not one single candidate after not only looking at the resumes but also listening to the presentations I know myself, there's probably four or five that really stood out, um, and the others were also home runs as well. And I would certainly encourage boards and commissions, and, and that is one of the things that's kind of um, a focal point for the mayor and for the council is to make sure that, that we do have and bring to the table to our boards and commissions um, a diverse group. And, and the boards of commissions do two things. It gives people the opportunity, if they haven't been a part of the city of Oshkosh and the government to actually participate, you tend to learn a lot um, about different processes. You definitely will certainly meet new people um, that definitely have diverse backgrounds, so I certainly encourage that. And most importantly, I personally am a process person, and I think if you want, if if you want to serve the, the constituents and you really want to get an understanding, I highly recommend, although it's challenging and it will test you and it will tax you and it will definitely get you outside of your comfort zone, is to run for office, whether it's city council or whether it's for the county um, or something even at the state level. You really do grow from it. I think um, Mr. Esslinger talked about um, that certainly when, when you are an elected official, you certainly share in a number of criticisms. And again, um, you know, with that, um, some of my biggest critics have actually become biggest fans, but that's because of engagement and being willing to listen. So, you know, I highly, highly recommend going through that, whether you win or lose, most certainly, it's a process and it's a learning process and boy you'll certainly hear what people want and the, for the younger folks that answer the doorbell when you're getting signatures Kentucky Fried Chicken and Chick-fil-A was definitely hot on the topic of what needed to be brought to Oshkosh but you also certainly hear about the things and the concerns about infrastructure economic development um, poverty um, transportation for jobs and a number of issues 
Um, so with that, like I said, I am sure there are there are many of us who have more than one candidate that we'd be very comfortable with in this seat. Thank you. I, I just have a pretty short and sweet, uh, I guess, closing, and that is, um, in addition to you putting yourself out there, I, I also thank you for um, being willing to kind of fill in when there's a need. Um, absolutely, certainly, you know, there are opportunities for people to run for office, but, you know, changing direction kind of in uh, short, relatively short notice and um, looking at, you know, helping in this way is really important as well. And I certainly am so inspired by the great talent and uh, passion that we saw in the presentations tonight. Um, some people, you know, look wonderful um, on paper, and then adding, uh, this is kind of like the icing on the cake to have those presentations um, just shine that up even more. So thank you again. And I think it's now time for us to start working on our nominations. So um, selection procedure, uh, I'm going to ask for nominations the first time. Each council member will have that opportunity. Um, there will be a second opportunity. So let's see here. If we could have uh, the clerk take the roll, then each council member would give their um, nomination. Herman. William Miller. Krause. Lindsay Erickson. Wilgrower. Tom Peck. Peschel. Michael Ford. Allison Osby. Allison Nats. Paul Mary. Annabelle Corelli. All right. Can, and we, can we repeat those one more time or not? The names that were? Yeah, the names that were. All right. Uh, <coughs> Clerk, would you like to repeat the names? Herman, Miller, Krause, Erickson, Wugerauer, Pack, Peschel, Ford. Allison Osby, Knauts, uh, Paul Mary, Bella Corey. All right, so we will do a second round of nominations if there's anyone else. Clerk, can you please take the roll? <coughs> Council members indicate if you have a second nomination you'd like to put forth. Herman. Um, David Keck. Krause? No. Mugrower? No. Cashel? No. Allison Osby? No. Paul Mary? No. So by my count, we have seven nominations. That is correct. I'll make a motion to close nominations. Second. Discussion? <clears throat> and clerk, can we please take the roll on that? Herman? Aye. Krause? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Peschel? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried six. All right. So now uh, the city clerk will poll council members if you would respond with the name of the applicant that you're casting your vote for. Oh. Ready? You're calling? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay. Herman? Uh, William Miller. Krause? Lindsay Erickson. Wilgrower. Peck. Peschel. Erickson. Allison Osby. 
Peck. Paul Mary. Erickson. We have two for Peck, one for Miller, two for Erickson, and one. No, wait. And one. We have three for, for Erickson. Peck. Yeah, three for Peck. No, three for Erickson. Sorry. So a successful applicant must receive a majority vote of four votes. It does not appear that we have four votes. So it looks like we will need to vote again. On the top two applicants, nominees? Correct. Yes. Herman? Peck. Krause? Erickson. Grower? Peck. Peschel? Erickson. Allison Osby? Peck. Paul Mary? Erickson. Lost 3-3. Three, three. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor. Um, in the event of a tie or other failure to obtain a majority of four votes, council may decide to revote or to restart the nomination process. Um, I guess I'll make a motion that we revote one more time. I'll second that. Discussion. Clerk, can you oh, Clerk, can you please take the roll on that? Herman. Aye. Krause. Aye. Bulgrower? Aye. Peschel? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried six. All right. So we will, clerk will poll the council members again. Respond with the name of the applicant that you are casting your vote for. Of the two. Of the two. Of the two. Lindsay Erickson and Tom Peck, Jr. Herman. Peck. Krause. Erickson. Mugrower. Peck. Peschel. Erickson. Allison Osby. Peck. Paul Mary. Erickson. Lost 3-3. Three, three. So we have the opportunity to either revote one more time or we can restart the nomination process. Make a motion to reopen nominations. Second. Clerk, can you please take the roll? Herman. Peck. We're no, we're re reopening nominations. Re oh, yes, voting for. Second oh. for re restarting yes. nominations. I'll make a second. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm in favor of it. I yes. Don't confuse me any more than I am. Crozy. Aye. Mugrower. Aye. Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried six. All right, so we will go back to opening nominations. Um, each council member may nominate someone from the original list of 14. Herman. Are we going in that order again? Or can anybody nominate? Oh, yes. Yes. I'll yes. nominate Michael Ford. Councilmember Allison Osby. Tom Peck. Councilmember Krause. Lindsay Erickson. Any other nominations? Move to close nominations. Okay. Second. So in the second round, do we have the ability to nominate a second person if everybody's oh, nope, taking yep. their opportunity? Yep. Or forgot no? about that. Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay. Allison Knotts. Okay. 
Other nominations? Adam Bella Cor Corelli. Motion, do I have a motion to close nominations or do we have other nominations? Move to close nominations. Second. And please call the roll. Herman? Aye. Crosey? Aye. Mugaror? Aye. Peschel? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Palmieri? Aye. Carried six. All right. So we will now call the roll for a vote on either Michael Ford, Tom Beck Jr., Lindsay Erickson, Allison Knutz, or Adam Belcarelli. Yes, please call the roll. Herman. Peck. Rosie. Erickson. Mugerower. Peck. Peschel. Bill Corelli. Allison Osby. Peck. Paul Mary. Erickson. Three for Peck, two for Erickson, and one for Bella Corey. So we are back at Peck and Erickson as the two and we'll need to revote. Herman. Peck. Krause. Erickson. Mugrower. Peck. Peschel. Erickson. Allison Osby. Peck. Paul Mary. Erickson. Lost 3-3. Three, three. Motion to open nominations again. So this will be the third call for nominations. Do we have a second? Second. Clerk, please take the roll. Herman? Aye. Krause? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Peschel? Aye. Allison Osby. Aye. Paul Mary. Aye. Carried three or six. <laughs> All right. Wait, I'm not the only one making this. All right. So uh, we'll open nominations. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you. William Miller. Councilmember Peschel. Uh, Allison Knott. Councilmember Krause. Erickson. Councilmember Allison Asby. Adam Belcarelli. All right. Motion to I'm, close nominations. One moment. Oh, sorry. So we have is there only four? Four. Okay. Yes. All right. Sorry. Go ahead. Motion to close nominations. Second. Second. Please call the roll. Herman? Aye. Crosey? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Peschel? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried six. Can we get the list of candidates? No. <clears throat> Bella Corelli, Miller, Erickson, Knauts. All right. Close nominations, and now uh, the city clerk will poll council members again who respond with the name of the applicant they're casting their vote for out of those four. Herman? Miller. Krause? Erickson. Wilgrower. Miller. Peschel. Knotts. Knotts. Allison Osby. 
Miller. Paul Mary. Erickson. Miller three, Erickson two, Knauts one. Lost. All right, so we will. Don't they got to be voted on, the two finalists? Vote on William Miller and Lindsay Erickson. Clerk, please call the, not call the roll, but you know what I'm saying. Herman? Miller. Krause? Erickson. Ugerauer? Miller. Eschel? Miller. Allison Osby? Miller. Paul Mary? Erickson. Miller, four. Erickson, two. So four successful votes. Councilmember Mugerauer. I move to adopt resolution 19269 appointing Bill Miller to fill the vacant council seat. Second. Clerk, can you please take the roll? Herman? Aye. Krause? Aye. Ugerauer? Aye. Paschal? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried six. So at this point, the clerk will swear in the new council member, William Miller. Actually, uh, this is citizen's statements. This will be a first opportunity uh, for citizens to address council. Um, statements are limited to five minutes. Must address items that are not listed on the council meeting agenda. Are limited to issues that have an impact on the city of Oshkosh, and the common council may address at a future meeting. Must not include endorsements of any candidates or other electioneering. Do we have any citizens registered to speak? No one is registered. Thank you. We already passed the consent agenda and there were no items removed from the consent agenda so we will move on to pending ordinances ordinance 19286 approve amendments to chapter 6 of the Oshkosh municipal code pertaining to keeping of urban chickens and bees motion and a second no one is registered Thank you. So moved. Second. Discussion? Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you, Mayor. Uh, Mr. Riley, could you come up and... Thank you very much. Um, chapters, amending chapter six. Six has been around urban beekeeping, urban chicken keeping. You want to just highlight maybe a couple of the changes? Sure. I'd say the uh, most important thing 
um, the most salient change would be that we are eliminating the um, notification and consent requirement for the chicken side of it. Okay. Um, and then the notification for the beekeeping too. Um, we also ask for a few things in return. So, for example, we're codifying a, like the chicken coop, you know, sanitary condition has to be maintained in, um, stuff like that. Um, also, I would say the uh, the beekeeping, you know, the flyway barrier is not required in all cases anymore. It's only if the flyway barrier, if the hive is going to be located within 25 feet of the lot line. Okay. Um, and the number of chickens and that hasn't changed? That would be the same as before. And beekeeping, the same number of bees or hives? or For the bees, um, actually, there there would be a um, volumetric requirement or limitation as opposed to a dimensional for the hives. We just found that that would allow for like top bar hives, which are supposed to be more sustainable for the bees, according to some of the input that we received. Okay. Um, so we still wanted to maintain the intent of the original ordinance, which is to cap the number of bees at a finite number, um, you know, so that we don't have people with just huge swarms of bees or huge amounts, you know, for smaller properties in the city. Okay. So we heard from citizens that are engaged in this type of activity and... Yes. <coughs> um, they came to some of the sustainability advisory board meeting um, sessions and spoke. Um, so we did hear from some of them. They did also email me and provided some good input. Some um, other comparable communities to look at too as far as our ordinances and processes. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you know uh, top of your head how many chicken coops we have in Oshkosh? Um, I'm trying to think. I think it's in the 20s, like maybe 23, oh, 24, okay. if I remember correctly. Okay, and we bees, had, keepers? Bees was um, maybe five or so. Okay. There were fewer of those. Um, that ordinance hasn't been around nearly as long. Okay. Well, it's just nice to know that people are participating and we made some changes on the ordinance and that. And I appreciate mm -hmm. the time of the Sustainability Board to work on that. Thank sure. you, Mayor. Councilmember Mugerauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, I just have one quick question. Uh, as you mentioned, one of the biggest things on this one is removing the uh, the notification of the neighbors sure. for the uh, for the process. Uh, you mentioned you know 25 chicken coops ish, half a dozen bee uh, beehives. Um, through the process that we've gone through up to this point, has there been much concern with neighbors when they've been notified, uh, and or complaints or anything like that that um, have got, given you cause for concern? Not really. I think the biggest issue that I've come up with, and I know I haven't been with the city for that long. I've only been here a little more than two years. I'd say the biggest issue that we've had is where people have complained in terms of if, if people are keeping chickens in violation of the ordinance, if they did not um, receive approval for a permit um, for keeping, like having the coop and having the chickens there, if they didn't go through the proper process or the proper channels, that's the, um, the biggest thing. Okay. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Councilmember Peschel. Sure. So, what I'm understanding now is that this change uh, makes it so that um, you don't have to have the permission of your neighbors in order to have a chicken coop. Yes, that's correct. All right. So, the biggest difference before was that if someone wanted to have a chicken coop, they had to ask all of their abutting neighbors for their permission, correct? Yep. Okay. And so, um, and that, that process alone, I assume, was, was a reason why you had so many of those houses or property owners that didn't have um, uh, law-abiding chicken coops, correct? Yes, I'd say um, I know the biggest issue is if, like, one abutting property owner decided that they sure. had concerns with the petitioner or the applicant having chickens, what would happen is they would vote no or they would just not sign the form and then it would be denied automatically. There was no appeals process at all, and that was it. They couldn't keep chickens. Okay. Um, we had, you know, excuses like, well, my dog could see the chickens and bark, stuff like that. Sure. So when, when we had some of those issues come up, we discussed it with the SAB. You know, I discussed it with obvi obviously my superiors, um, and they proposed reconsidering, you know, or amending potentially the ordinance. And so that's what we, we looked at doing. And we just tried to streamline it, but then at the same time maintaining the intent of the original ordinances and asking for, like I said, a little bit more in return um, as far as, you know, cleanliness, sanitary, um, you know, keeping the hives or keeping the, um, the coops in a sanitary manner, um, 
you know, just making sure that you're following all the proper procedures. There's also um, provisions for revoking the permits okay. too. And if they're revoked, then they would not be reinstated again for at least two years. We did not have that in the old ordinance. Um, we do have that in this one. So, sorry, can I go ahead? All right, thank you. Um, so did we have lots of um, non-conforming chicken, chicken coops in the city? Not that I'm aware of. Um, usually they did have, or they do have to submit a site plan, and we in planning and zoning have to approve the location. It has to meet accessory structure setbacks. So, no, I, I don't think, from what I can recall, that we would have had okay. any non-conforming. Okay, thank you. Well, I guess just in the spirit of supporting urban agriculture and sustainability, um, it seems like these modifications <coughs> might have helped bring together the urban beekeeping and uh, the urban chickens together in a more uniform way of managing that. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Any further discussion on that? All right. Counts, uh, Clerk, can you please take the roll on 19286? Herman? Aye. Krause? Aye. Grower? Aye. Heschel? Aye. Miller? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Period 7. Ordinance 19287, approve parking regulation change for the Algoma lot stalls 37 through 39. Do I have a motion and a second on that? So moved. Second. Discussion? Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you. I just want to for the community's interest, it uh, was a request by the sanitation, private sanitation company. It deals with the um, lot by a couple restaurants and they were, the parking was blocking so they could not get these mm -hmm. trucks in there to remove the garbage and it was creating a problem. So the bid was behind supporting this and it, having it posted uh, so that they could uh, remove the trash. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. Can we, clerk, can we please take the roll on 19287? Herman? Aye. Krause? Aye. Mugrower? Aye. Heschel? Aye. Miller? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. O'Mary? Aye. Carry seven. Next, uh, new ordinances. Um, there, a designation that no formal action is anticipated to be taken on this item. 19288, approved zone change from institutional to institutional district with a planned development overlay at 913 Nebraska Street. Plan Commission recommends approval. We have a motion on a second, or sorry, there is no motion on that. That's a new ordinance. Um, new resolutions, resolution 19289, approve general development plan for multi-use developments located at Marion Road redevelopment sites, H, I, and J. Plan Commission recommends approval. Need a motion and a second on 19289. So moved. Second. Discussion? Deputy Mayor? Oh, no. You clicked. Okay. Any discussion on 19289? Clerk, can you please take the roll? Herman? Aye. Krause? Aye. Ubrower? Aye. Heschel? Aye. Miller? Aye. Ellison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried seven. Resolution 19-290. Approved determination of necessity, approved budget amendment and fund transfer, authorize redevelopment authority to acquire vacant parcels adjacent to Pioneer Drive and Canadian National Railroad tracks between 6th and 10th Avenue, $1,500,000. A motion on a second on 19-290. So moved. Second. Discussion. Councilmember Mugrauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Mr. Davis, maybe we'll give you the floor a little bit. Maybe you can inform us. Um, we should be in the know, but maybe you'll inform the public a little bit as to what we're doing here, what we're acquiring, and uh, why we're doing it. Yes. Uh, back in about 2003, the city adopted the South Shore Redevelopment Plan. Uh, that en encompasses a lot of the land between Pioneer Island all the way to the boat works. And this particular parcel is along Pioneer Drive between Main Street and the CN Railroad tracks. 
It's the piece of land that lies between Pioneer Drive right away, which the city possesses, and the balance of the RDA properties that go extend down to 9th Avenue. Uh, the South Shore Redevelopment Plan contemplates the redevelopment of these blighted properties, and uh, over the last 15 years, the RDA has acquired uh, those properties at, at, as they're identified on that map. Uh, this is the last piece to really provide 43 7th and 1 East 8th access to Pioneer Drive and a future river walk that we're hoping to install in 2020 and 2021. I just have one quick follow-up on that. I, um, within the last year or so, I can't remember the timeline, but we had put out an RFP for potential development. Uh, I think the oh, it was up there. If you wouldn't mind throwing the map back up, um, between the Seventh and Eighth Street blocks, um, there was no takers. There was no no submitted plans. Yes. Um, and that this was this acquisition could aid in in that development. Well, that was actually the comments that we got from some of the people who were interested but ended up not proposing is that until uh, this strip of land was incorporated in the development, uh, they had no uh, reason to believe that could, they'd have access to the river walk or a view of the river by a, a acquiring this property and making it part of the much larger parcel. They have the guarantee of the access of the river walk, uh, access to the water, uh, Depending on what the developer might want to do, we could even install uh, docks or piers uh, to their benefit as well. So they really wanted the connection out to uh, where we're putting those major improvements. Thank you. Councilmember Krause? Um, I just had a qu question for Ms. Larson. I just wanted to um, have you explain and inform the citizens of Oshkosh how this is being paid for so they understand yes so this project has three funding sources my apologies while well, I just located in my book <clears throat> So we're utilizing available fund balance of 1100000 and then we're also using two funding sources from 2019 CIP, which were cash funded. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Herman. Uh, one more question, Ms. Larson. Um, on that. CAP, are, are these <coughs> kind of RDA control funds or are they city control? A uh, very good question. So they are actually uh, both the CIP South Shore with a donation from TIF 7, so that is not RDA related, and the blight removal is also not RDA related. Uh, that is a cash funded uh, scattered site uh, removal source. Okay. Ms. Larson, uh, the scattered site, is that CDBG funding? Uh, no, that is something that is brought through the uh, levy funding of the budget process. Uh, so it's direct levy or what we also call cash funding. It's part of that $1 million. All right, thank you. Councilmember Mugrauer. Thank you. Ms. Larson, I actually have a, a two-parter. Uh, first part, uh, when we went through CIP in the budget process um, this last fall, um, I had uh, the intention of uh, the suggestion to use a similar amount from our reserve fund, from our fund balance to uh, pay for a construction project. Um, at the time, finance wasn't uh, in that much support of that idea. Yeah. Completely fine. Why are you in support of using cash this time? And then second part is, what's it leave our balance at afterwards and how do we look um, financially after that? So the reason that this is now a, a good positional move is um, we have about a million and a half going into our fund balance from year end 2018. So we're not actually reducing any of our already available reserves. Our fund balance policy is calculated, it's about 27% with the new growth. Um, so we will be well within our uh, fund balance policy adopted by council. Thank you. City staff, Mr. Davis. Yes, I uh, would also like to highlight uh, the Pioneer Drive right-of-way. Uh, I know the 
RDA and the council has talked about this in the past, but wanted to report that the CN did uh, sign the, the deed to make sure that the city has full rights to build that river walk uh, in 2020 and 2021. So I just want to make, highlight that and uh, thank CN for uh, acting so promptly. Council Member Mubarar. To put that in uh, maybe easier terms for people at home to understand, that means we now own the land that that road, that Pioneer Drive sits on, and we can control what's developed and what isn't developed on yes. that road now. So we have access to uh, that property. Yes. Thank you. All right. Any other discussion? <clears throat> All right. Seeing none, Clerk, can we please take the roll? Resolution 19290. Herman? Aye. Krause? Aye. Mugerower? Aye. Paschal? Aye. Miller? Aye. Allison Osby? Aye. Paul Mary? Aye. Carried seven. Next is council discussion and direction to city manager and future agenda items. Um, the one and only thing on there is adding alternates to boards and commissions <coughs> that currently do not have alternate seats. Um, I, I brought this to council uh, for a couple of reasons. Uh, it had been recommended at one point previously in the study that we did on the boards and commissions, but more specifically, um, one of the boards and commissions voted this week, uh, the Rental Housing Advisory Board, uh, to ask council to allow alternates to be appointed uh, to that board. So just kind of open that up for council discussion and direction to city manager as it relates to possibly adding alternates on boards and commissions that don't currently have them. City staff. Oh, 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 I think Alan oh. forgot to turn this <laughs> off. Oh, turn your button off now. Okay. <laughs> Council Member Mugerauer. Thank you. Actually, and I have something on this and then an additional um, direction to staff after we're done with this, this topic. I think it's a great idea. Um, it uh, opens up slots for uh, anyone who's interested. I hope we get one or two extra ones from tonight's uh, exercise. And, um, you know, I know uh, in the past we've heard how difficult it can be to uh, get people to serve on boards and commissions, but if we have the opportunity to create some open slots and to uh, put people in there without removing others, um, it's nothing but a benefit in my eyes. So I think it's a great idea. Thank you. Council Member Peschel. Sure. I think my, my question is about process in regards to what initiates uh, their, that alternate's involvement in, in the meeting. City manager. I can, we have two, yeah, I, got four. I can answer that one. <laughs> and by the way, the buttons aren't working. I mean, the screen's not working, so everybody has to turn their button off after they. Yeah. Got All it. All right. Thanks. Um, typically, if you you have alternates show up, if the you don't have the full board members there, then the chair will appoint that alternate. The there's like first or second alternates. They'll appoint that person to serve for that meeting. Mm -hmm. All right. Can I follow up? I. Uh, Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, so, so that's to suggest that there may be prior communication from like the chair of that commission or that board or a staff person. Kind sometimes of. there is. Sometimes, you know, it depends on the reason the person isn't there. If they get sick, they may not know sure. too much ahead of time. Um, if we generally ask all our boards and commissions to give at least 24 hours notice, if they give 24 or longer notice, that gives staff the opportunity to call the alternates. If it's shorter than that, we may not be able to do that just by the nature of the time. And I'll just kind of add a chime in there too. It's my understanding that the alternates would be participating in the discussion even when they aren't sitting there voting. Just no voting. Just no voting. Got it. So that they're up to speed. So they are there participating, just not voting, unless there's not quorum, and then they fill in the regular member seat. So they're part of the process from, they get all the packets ahead of time, they, they've been, you know, they, they feel like they're part of that process and decision making when they need to be. That's my understanding. City Manager? Uh, all of the above, one of the things that I questioned staff on, because I was concerned about you know, because we're already trying to fill boards and commissions. 
The staff's observation is that the alternates probably have a better attendance record than the regular members themselves. They're very conscientious about what they do, and they are. And, and I think part of it is they are welcomed to participate in the discussions, and I think that that helps and, and makes them feel engaged. So that when they are, uh, somebody said pinch hit, when they're brought into pinch hit, they're ready to go. Does council have any? Does council have any thought on to I guess the time that of the appointment for alternates, or would that be dependent upon? City Attorney, um, the actual board or commission? It depends on how you want to do it. The, the, the City Attorney and I can uh, discuss that a little bit. You mentioned that you've gone to rental housing. One of the options, do you want to ask the boards, do, would they like those? And we can, I can direct staff to put that on the next agenda for every board and commission, then we can report back. I think the City Attorney has a couple options that she could consider about our local option committees. We have a lot of flexibility, uh, and I think, uh, City Attorney has a couple ideas on how that can be done. About maybe half, I didn't count them all up, um, of the boards actually have alternates in their ordinances now. We could just put a blanket ordinance in place that allows the mayor with council approval to appoint alternates to all the boards and commissions, and then you would have the option to do that, you, and you can bring them forward as you have applicants and as you right. can fill the positions. All right. It, it's really up to the council which way you want to go, if you want to do it each board by board, which is kind of how it's been done, or if we just want to do a blanket ordinance. And I will say that right now we do have an application that came in for one of the boards and commissions that did not have alternates designated, but that individual applied for an alternate position. So um, it does happen. Anybody else? Let's see. Uh, Councilmember Allison Osby. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I think we heard a lot about um, community engagement, citizen engagement, and our boards and commissions are made up of our citizens that live within the city of Oshkosh. So I think um, this is something I think is a great opportunity to engage them. So let's pose it to them. So for those that may not have alternates or even those that do, review the policy with them, make sure it is something they want to do. Um, rather than us uh, unilaterally making that decision, let's engage them. Council Member Miller. Um, I, I think we saw a lot of energy and a lot of need for people to, or, or want and need for them to participate. I think this is a great idea, seriously. I mean, how many, how many great candidates do we have tonight? I think everybody in the room that applied for this seat would want to be an alternate if, if the board position was filled. So, absolutely. Deputy Mayor Herman. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I can agree with Councilmember Allison Osby. Um, we have a lot of boards and commissions, and we need to make sure that we have them filled. I, I hope we would have enough alternates, but I think um, do we want to make it mandatory that there's alternates on every board and commission, or are there certain ones I guess my thinking is we would want to make sure we have alternates on boards and commissions that directly impact our budget to have an impact that way. It's not saying that any other board and commission is not important. Don't get me, I don't want anybody to think that I look at it that way. But I do think that um, there are several where we really struggle getting people on. And yes, we may not have candidates that are alternates. So I guess my thinking is, is we have, I think it's 16 or 17 boards and commissions. We have a lot. There's a lot. 20, <laughs> yes. 23. 23. There we go. Yes, we talked about that at the meeting. I kind of forgot about that. Anyways, um, I, I guess, yeah, I, you know, there's some longstanding boards and commission members. Um, would they feel like they could? I guess, and you're looking at me, so I'll, well, I, I'll I jump in. But I didn't I, mean to look at you. I wasn't suggesting but. it be mandatory. What I was suggesting was that if we do an ordinance that says the mayor with council approval may appoint up to two alternates for any board or commission, okay. and then you would have the option to fill it as you would have candidates, if that makes it okay. more clear. Okay, uh, I guess that, that, that's a good way to go. Let me write, remind may. you guys to turn your lights off if you've already spoken. Uh, council Member Mugrauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I happen to agree with uh, Council Member Osby on this one that um, let's engage those boards and commissions, just ask. We can still. 
it sounds bad to say it. We can still do whatever we want afterwards anyways, but um, let's ask them. Let's see if there's interest from those boards and commissions that don't have them. There may be some that um, are having issues meeting quorum, which is exactly why we want alternates. There may be some that they just don't see a need uh, at this time, but we could always come back to it. But rather than us exert our will on all of them, let them have a say. At least let them report back and, and give it a month. It, it won't hurt to give it uh, 31 days or 30 days to, to let them report back. Councilmember Krause. Um, in my personal opinion, I don't know why we would need to ask a board and commission if they want an alternate. I mean, it, it's up to us if we feel like we could build a bench, we could let some of these people that apply get on a board that they actually want to be on. I mean, some of the boards are harder to fill than others, but if we can get people experience, exper experience is experience, it'll help build our future here with more citizens involved. Councilmember Allison Asby. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify, I do agree and I do think the alternates to boards and commissions, I do think that idea has value. Um, so I just want to clarify that. The only thing that I'm saying is what I have heard from not only this council um, over the last month, but also from a number, number of the applicants today was that, you know, more engagement. So again, it's just an opportunity and to Mr. Mugerauer's point, um, certainly empower them to contribute to the conversation rather than us just making the decision. City Manager. Uh, the one th only thing I was going to add, it was really more at the conclusion. If you recall when we did the boards and commission study a couple of years ago, we put together a summary and what I, I, I'll have staff do is put that in your newsletter so that council members brought up the speed. We, with the changes that the council made, we've updated that. Um, some of our required committees are governed by statute. They may not lend, they may not uh, allow. I know the Police and Fire Commission, for example, does not permit alternates. But all of the, the locally created ones, it's totally up to council's discretion. And you'll see which <coughs> ones already have them and which ones don't. So uh, based on the council direction, we'll make sure you get this information so you can refresh your memory about uh, where all the boards and commissions stand. So then could we put this on the May um, agenda to revisit this in the form of a resolution? If that's what you want, unless you want us to go back to the Boards and Commission and give that a month, that's, that's entirely... I'm sorry, I didn't catch that. You, there was a discussion about sent, going back to Boards and Commissions and getting in. I'm in contact with the chairs. Okay, so, but they'll, it's going to take a whole month to do the cycle of meetings. A lot of com Boards and Commissions have already met for this month. Right. So they would right. meet the following month. So okay, let's do June. Okay, uh, so June. Second, second, first meeting in June. First second. meeting June in 11. June, because the second meeting would be the twenty eighth of May. So then we're looking at what? The eleventh <coughs> is the first. Yes. Or the twenty. First. First council meeting. If you can, if you have enough feedback. If not, it may need to be the second one. But I think the city attorney was recommending an ordinance that, that gives. Yeah. Right. Isn't that what you were suggesting, Lynn? Yeah. Yeah, that's what I was suggesting. I'm not. I'm just trying to be clear on what you want to come back. If it's, we get the feedback and then prepare an ordinance. Right. For okay. And, then you'll and I, feel I have ones want it and which uh, ones made contact with mm, all but about eight of those boards and commission chairs. Okay. So, right. so we can give you an ordinance that'll give you the ability, <laughs> the flexibility to kind of do it as as you recognize a need. The boards and commissions will tell we tell you which ones they really want them on, then you can take it from there. So, we'll plan an ordinance uh, for June 11th. Uh, just to make it easy, are you interested in waiving the first reading? Just just to kind of get an idea, so we can put it accordingly. Yeah. yeah. Ready to uh, roll? Okay. Yeah. We'll put. Yeah. We'll assume that you want to adopt it on first reading as well. Yeah, that'd be great. Councilmember Allison Osby, are you oh. again, or is it your button? Okay. It's my button. Uh, city Manager. Clear. Councilmember Peschel. Sure, and I, I think I got what I was looking for, um, but I, I guess I just wanted to kind of hit it home is that, you know, the, I, I view this as being the purview of the mayor to appoint and us to approve, correct? Mm -hmm. So, um, and I don't see there's, I don't see there, in my opinion, I don't necessarily feel, though I think it's important to go back to our boards and commissions about it, I still believe that it's already, the, the concept is already existing within, within the purview of our ordinance. Um, so um, I guess I'm, I'm already comfortable with, with handing that responsibility in an ordinance form to the mayor to be approved by us to doing that. 
So it's, that's my opinion. Councilmember Member Mugerauer. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Um, uh, just to clarify two parts. Uh, one, um, it, while it is within our purview, it's good to engage with those who help guide us and who give us guidance and to uh, appreciate their uh, their spot in this role or their, their, um, their part of the process. Um, to show that appreciation, it goes a long way. Doesn't mean we still can't do it very quickly. It doesn't mean that I don't support it, because I absolutely do, but it'd be nice to hear from them. Um, but just to make sure that, that one part is clarified or, or one point that I can try to make here, while I appreciate that the mayor uh, is engaged with the board chairs um, regularly, that's nice, um, but the council uh, can hear from the entire boards and commissions, not just the chairs, on the chair's purviews. Um, so that's why we're asking, or that's why I would ask that it's put on the agenda for each of the um, appropriate uh, boards and commissions for them to discuss, and then they can just um, give us their thoughts uh, as an entire entity, not just the chair. And council certainly has an opportunity to share their concerns once an appointment is brought to council. Anything further? All right. Not on that one. Citizens. I had one. You council, have one more. I, oh, okay. Um, Councilmember Just Brown, direction sorry. to city manager and staff. Um, we talked about this briefly at our um, special meeting last Monday regarding the process that just unfolded this evening. I think it'd be wise um, to have a council discussion at the next meeting. Just put it on the agenda for us to discuss. Do a little post-mortem, what we thought went well, what we think could be improved, and uh, give some direction to staff if there is any improvements that this council sees um, for the next time it has to go through this process, hopefully a very long time down the road. But I think uh, it's worthy of discussion. All right. We'll plan to put it on the next, we'll plan to put it on the next agenda. The next agenda. Thank you. And we are at the second opportunity for citizen statements to council. Do we have anyone registered, Pam? No one is registered. All right. And we don't have any council member announcements or statements. City manager announcements and statements. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, in your agenda packets, the first quarter report on revenues and expenditures, there's nothing really uh, big to report. We're pretty much tracking. If first quarter doesn't generally have a lot of uh, activity except all our property tax comes in and that's about the only real big change you see for over the course of the year. Uh, if you have any questions, happy to answer them. Otherwise, uh, I'll just move on to a uh, next item. Status of outstanding issues at the organizational meeting, the council asked, I hope I answered your question, Madam Mayor, when with the email I had, we had neglected to talk about it. In your packet, uh, what I've done, and, and let's call it just a, a test model for you, is, uh, Items, and I went back about six months to a year on any workshop that councils had, and just the general agenda, um, any specific items that council had given me direction on. And I've summarized those, and I tried to put them in the order in which uh, they initially came on this list. Um, and gave you all a summary of all of them. Uh, for example, the mayor had asked me about the update on the fee to replace special assessments for street improvements. And as it says there, the report to council by June 1st on proposed fee and amendments to the special assessment policy. Uh, Friday, uh, May 31st, uh, uh, your weekly packet will have that report. Uh, Finance Director Larson and Public Works Director Robbie and I met today. We're on track to give that to you. Uh, and then we can, the idea, we'll put it on for discussion at the June 11th meeting, and then we'll, uh, we'll work on taking appropriate policy action based on that discussion. So I feel, I'm feeling very good about that, that one item. As you can see, there's other, other items there. If you think I missed anything, please don't hesitate to ask. I tried to put a date of next status report or update, kind of a, a tickler file for me to report back to council. If, uh, if I miss a deadline, you, you've got it. You can, uh, you can say what happened to this one, for example, 528 is also uh, the next update, uh, the mayor had asked about uh, bringing the matter back to council, the uh, park building, and how, how we do with that. Because of expecting tonight's meeting, I didn't put it on tonight's agenda, but I put it on for the, uh, the 28th, you'll have it. So that gives you an example. Again, this is a work in progress. Please take a look at it. You see anything that 
you'd like to see, just let me know whether it's an item or <coughs> something else. But I want to give you a little update with each report, and hopefully this covers it. And then if there's any attachment to this status of outstanding issues, it'll be listed on there. And in this case, the Oshkosh Corp summary is still there. We're going to keep putting it in there uh, on a on a bi -week or a biweekly basis. So if you got anything, let me know, and I'll be happy to, to add it. I just uh, have a question. So on that summary that you provided us, um, one of the things uh, for KPIs for departments, I thought in December we were anticipating a spring, um, like end of first quarter, beginning of second quarter um, delivery on that, but this is saying July 9th. We have the uh, KPIs, but the reporting, the reporting form wasn't working online. Ah. We've got them. Uh, I could, I'm happy to report we got the KPIs. The reporting form was just a little wonky, and I just didn't want to. Um, we would have had to create a new document. But we will have that before we begin budget. Yeah, you're going to have the first workshops, right? You're going to have the first and second quarter KPIs at the July 9th council meeting, and that's why I put I put seven nine. That's your first meeting in July. I'll have it for you then. And I thank you for. I, I what I like about this is you're going to be able to just. Identify those things and let me know. Yeah, I think it's a good process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank, thank you. you so much for going the extra mile there. Council Member Peschel. Sure. Um, being a newer council member on the, on the dais here, uh, I guess I'd like to request the police staffing study. That was, it's in your second? It's the second item, yeah. Yep. Um, Lisa, I'd like, I'd like to be provided a copy of that study so that. You have a junior person as well here, so I think I was requesting. I was going to connect him to it. Probably one, would like a copy yeah. yourself. Okay. And as well as the park, though you probably have access to the park facility yeah. study. So, okay. We'll get the park. We'll get both studies, as well as the facility studies and the staffing studies. Thanks for bringing it up, Bob. Sure. That that makes perfect sense. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. That's all I have, Madam Mayor, unless there's any questions. Thank you. I see no other questions. Or... I move to adjourn. All right. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Aye.